We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! Welcome to the Mouthpiece, episode 56, year two. Today, we're going to talk about, well, the election. And we're going to talk about the negrano Doug Polk matchup. We're also going to have an interview with our special guest, four-time bracelet winner, Mr. Jeff Matson. We're going to talk about my free roll into my home game free roll tournament coming up next Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern. The Mouthpiece is next. What up, what up? Welcome to the Mouthpiece, episode 56, year two. All right, let's start this off. There's so much going on. I'm going to start this off by talking about my, for last, stop it, my free roll to, in my home game next Friday, 7 p.m. Um, it's a $3,000 free roll. Anybody could sign up. So email mouthpoker at yahoo.com, mouthpoker at yahoo.com, and uh, you'll be eligible to play in my free roll tournament for 3000 bucks. Now, um, the election's finally been called. Uh, just listen to Joe Biden give his bullshit speech because that's what the Democrats are. They're all bullshit, but... I'm not like the liberals. I I um, respect him as my president. I'm not going to sit there and say, Donald Trump is not my president, because he was your president, and he still is for three more months. Um, there, It's far from over. I mean, I don't think there's any chance Trump can win, uh, but he will expose a lot of fraud, hopefully, going into the next election to show how corrupt these motherfuckers are. Um, I uh, I mean, any way you look at it, uh, the whole mail-in ballot thing was the biggest fraud ever put on the American people. Um, they used COVID as an excuse to get mass mail-in ballots to send them out to everybody on the rolls instead of get out the vote. And then they had big tech and every organization go in with them to get Trump out. And then they censored all conservative media the last two weeks of the election to get anything negative out about Biden. It was a coordinated coup by the media, and it is what it is. But um, I hope uh, I hope the people on the right uh, don't go crazy. Um yeah, Kamala, she's the absolute worst human being in the world. Uh, I told people, I said, uh, you know, Joe Biden, he, I mean, he's an old, nice old man. What, I mean, what, whatever. He's been in politics for 47 years. What's he going to, what's he going to fucking change? You know, Kamala is going to be president anyways. So, um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I got the heebie-jeebies. The um, Daniel Negreanu, uh Doug Polk match. Uh, Daniel started off well. He won 112 day one. Lost two twelve day two, uh, as you all know. I've got uh, uh, ten thousand. Uh, did you tweet this out? Ten thousand uh, dollars on Daniel at four to one to win. Um, I uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, I think he'll he's going to have a shot, uh, and uh, we'll go from there. So. Um, See what else is going on. There's uh, the Clemson games getting crushed at halftime. They're down 10. Uh, we got my pick of the week coming up here later in the show. Uh, but so much going on. I want to, we're going to go ahead and go to the pick of the week after. We're going to hook up hook up with Jeff Madsen, uh, four-time bracelet winner Jeff Madsen, uh, now. And uh, then uh, we're going to take phone calls from everybody who who wants to um to listen and uh you know we'll go from there so we're just uh waiting to uh to hear from jeff um what a clusterfuck this election fucking thing was um they you watched all the things coming in on election night you watch trump go from two to one dog 
to literally five to one favorite by around nine thirty at night. They had like seventy five percent of the ballots all in. Trump was up by gazillion votes, and and here's where everybody went crazy. They stopped all the voting in Pennsylvania and Georgia for like three hours. They just said they're stopping the count. Three hours later, they start the count and 90% of the votes came in for Biden. And with that, they they had a court order to allow the Trump team to be within six feet to watch all the ballots. They were not allowed in on that Tuesday night. Um, and uh, people want to say, how can you steal the election? How could there be so much fraud? It's impossible to steal a big election. Um, the election has been decided by about 50,000 votes. They didn't steal millions of votes, okay? You're talking about the election, about 3,000 votes in, in Arizona, about 1,000 votes in Georgia, and about 40,000 votes in Pennsylvania. This is out of 150 million votes. So if you don't think you could steal an election on 50,000 votes, mail-in ballots, you're just stupid. I mean, last year, I think we had a million mail-in ballots total. It might be 2 million. And this year, 80 million. Okay, never been done in history. They call it election day for a reason, not election by mail. Uh, no, we don't even use mail. I didn't even know we use mail anymore. I thought it's just all, uh, you know... Um, Emails. I mean, I never, I, I've never gone to my mailbox in years. Every time I go there, it's just junk mail. I just throw it all out to empty the thing. But for the election, let's just go back forty years in time and let's go back to mail in. Yeah. Give me a break. Anyways, uh, we got my man, four-time bracelet winner, Mister Jeff Matson, on the phone and line on the Zoom. What's up, Jeff? Yo, what up, up my man? What up, my man? How you doing? Pretty good, man. Just uh, 2020, just a crazy year. I think uh, it's been an interesting year, but just doing a lot of coaching, a lot of studying, good. and just kind of a lot of bullshit twittering and all. You know, I try my best, but there's yeah. so much going on. It's like you know, a shit show. Right you know, you're every time I ever watch you on Twitter, it was always the one-liners. The one-liners. <laughs> now it's the fuck. You, you stupid sheep motherfuckers. Yeah. Yeah. There's some swearing. You just, I don't know. You just get fed up with like, you know, on Twitter, I'm not trying to have a longer conversation no. than a few uh, tweets with these people. So you try and get your message across. Yeah. People assume you're just, you know, you're, so, you're a partisan or you're nefarious, but some people are actually just trying to look at the information and kind of look past a little bit of this first level uh, information we're getting. So I've known you for what about 12 years now 2008 was it when you won all of your bracelets the first two? oh six oh six you know. so i know wow yep. god time flies jeff it feels like it was yesterday my man and it does. I feel and, the same. and, and yeah. to all to all the viewers out there listening so i if i'm right and you could quote me on this in 2016 you were you were not a, a trump supporter right yeah i mean i wouldn't say i'm an any you were like a nobody yeah now. Right. But I think then the media was already starting to develop, you know, the anti-Trump stance. Right. Because as we've kind of seen the media is a basically a wing of the government, which obviously is leaning left right now. It's right. just sort of an unbiased. If you're really looking as an outside observer, mm -hmm. you really have to see how the media has gotten worse. And you realize maybe they were kind of bullshitting us in the beginning because it wasn't in their best interest to support this particular candidate. Right. You know, there's a lot of corruption on there's corruption on both sides, but right. the, the left kind of represents this old guard of politician, some corruption. And Trump is kind of, you know, despite his own whatever corruption, right. he he is draining this specific swamp. That's I agree. You know. I agree. So the media is, is the worst aspect of the whole thing. Though. Correct. Now, on election night, uh, I was on um, I was on the, the election thing with Matt Glantz and Brett Rich in them. And Andrew Barber was on and he asked me what I could do. He could do to make me not support Trump. And my answer to him was Trump's a fucking moron. He's 
good for the country, but he's a complete idiot, and he talks like a fucking idiot. Wrong. And, and it's the reason why he's probably not going to get, that's Dude, why he's not going to get reelected. Let me pull those buttons next time. Yeah, and um, I said, but I can't support the Democrats because I know they're corrupt and in bed with the media. If you if yeah. you look outside a liberal bubble media, you can expose everything they say as lies. Am I yeah. right? Yeah, no, absolutely. The issue is this sort of new sense of like the world reality being the media's portrayal of the world, Correct. which is such a first level way of interpreting the information. You know, mm -hmm. we're just trying to be, we're trying to look at all the corruption here. We're trying to see what's better for the nation. Right. And perhaps when the media is so biased, it's one of the, the worst possible things for democracy because Correct. they control people's mind. You know, it is mind control in a sense. People mm -hmm. aren't thinking for themselves. Mm -hmm. And when Biden is like the media's candidate, they're going to just paint whatever context, you know, and it's not, people are going to say, oh, you guys are delusional. Like Biden won, just accept it. They're just mm -hmm. crying Republicans. I accept it. It's not, it's not it at all. No, um, I agree. But what everyone pre celebrating today in this, you know, this fast, like getting the media to get this, you know, projection out, it, it shows how corrupt these people are in mm -hmm. a sense, because there is a lot of evidence legitimate of voter fraud. It's just I, I the agree. case in this election. And it happens to lean left. It just does. Um, it's mm -hmm. not like I care. I do care who wins, but like I'm not a pr Trump supporter. It's just literally how it is right I, now. I, I used to be a Trump supporter yeah. and I'm like you. I'm uh, I, I want what's right. Yeah. I said I said like four months ago when the, during the pandemic and they started pushing for mass mail in ballots. Maybe it was five months ago. I said, are they crazy? It was in June. Yeah. I said, are they crazy? They're going to steal the election. They're, they're, they can't yeah. allow mass mail in ballots. And Trump, yeah. then Trump was tweeting all about it. He was like, you can't have mass mail and ballots. Because, I mean, I think it was in New Jersey, there was like a, a, a vote uh, for congressionals or some kind of seat, and they, they found 50,000 fraudulent ballots or something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it so. was like, in the beginning, it's like COVID, COVID, COVID. So you got to mail in your ballots. Right. But, you know... Both sides know what's going on, right? They have intelligence on each side. Right. So Trump knows the voter fraud's coming. Mm -hmm. They have to plan a counterattack. The media, mm -hmm. you know, Trump basically has to battle the media, big tech, right? right. It's just oh, true. Oh, big tech. Um, I mean, look what they've done. Can yeah. you imagine censoring the president of the United States? It, it's, an, it's insane. And it's not like he's just tweeting random shit. He'll just retweet, like, legitimate voter fraud situations. Right. And... So it's not mainstream media filters into social media and it creates an echo chamber where it's like, mm -hmm. oh, Fox News reported that he won. So now everyone in all of social media is just putting their memes and congratulations and everyone's celebrating mm -hmm. that shows they're not actually aware of how many levels deep this is. Like it actually right. is going to go to the courts. It's, it's going like, to go to the courts it, and the, the election. And when people say, how can you steal an election where there can't be mass voter fraud? Well, Arizona's going to come down in about less than 5,000 votes, probably around 3,000 votes. Fucking Georgia comes down to 1,600 votes and all they have to do yeah. is expose about 40,000 in Pennsylvania and Trump wins the presidency. Now, I'm not yeah. trying to look like a conspiracy theorist and I'm crazy, but you follow the news. You're not, yeah. see the mainstream media and CNN and all that bullshit, they hide us from the information. We see the yeah. information, correct? Correct. I mean, the information they're giving is, it's even worse now than it was before because before Obama years, whatever, they're still biased, like they're pro elite still. Right, right, they're not right. going to just literally expose these people, but they'll yeah. talk about some decisions here and there, and it's kind of softball. Mm -hmm. But now it's even so biased that it's so left, and mm -hmm. the left is so interested in not having Trump continue because it's mm -hmm. not in their interest. Yeah. Um, so it creates this weird thing that's happening now where the media is sort of just throwing out well, you know, here, projections and, and delaying everything. And what people aren't seeing is it's going to litigation and Trump has, he's the incumbent. He has a lot of support, you know, despite what radicalized left people think of how could you support Trump? Like not everyone's stupid and just falls for like the same lies from one, you know, from either side, but from the Democrats oh, for yeah. a while. Uh, so it's not about picking a side. It's just like, no. look at the information. Exactly. The video, and and, and yeah. the thing is, is even when Trump's done so many things where I've just cringed and said, how could he say that? What is he? He's ridiculous, yeah. right? I go back yeah. and I say, 
The thing that people don't understand is, yeah, he like exaggerates sometimes. Like if they say, oh, my crowds were bigger than Obama, we know they weren't. Okay, if like yeah. he'll say like, like we've got 500,000 manufacturing jobs coming back and there's like 350, okay? He does little things like that. But what they hate the most about him, what the media despises the most about him is when he tells the truth and he does it a lot. Yeah, you it's know? just a weird time where, you know, it's not like politicians are dirty and they lie, but it's not like the truth. Sometimes the truth is on one side's side. So they right. don't have to like but be biased, you know, like right. if there is mass voter fraud, I mean, the Republicans are just trying to expose it. Right. That's the situation right now. There's no need to lie. Right. You know, um, so Trump, he's just people think that he's divisive, but it's actually the media that's divisive. Absolutely. And they use they use his image and his constant like throwing in your face that he's this racist and stuff. But if you actually look into it, like I'm sure he's a piece of shit, you know, and he's done some shit. Yeah, but like I agree. He, he hasn't he literally hasn't done anything publicly like he's just a yuppie kind of douchey real estate guy that people don't like his oration style. Agreed. They don't like these orange. They you like all news. these, not, you know, he's Hitler because of the, it's not e true at all. Okay. Yeah. But it doesn't mean he's Jesus either. It's just like, no, I, me and my, been fooled we, by the, me by the and media. my girl, we, we really supported him in 2016. And then when we, he, we really thought he'd be a lot more presidential and he wasn't. And yeah. it probably, and it cost him the election this year, if it does. And, the, but, but the point is, is no, they don't even not, the media was 92% for four years negative on him. The man has done yeah. policy wise more for the country than any president in history, but you won't, they don't report about it. And I think it's, no. I think it's disgusting how they portrayed him. I think they knew they couldn't win. So they used the pandemic. Oh, it's too scary to go out. We need mass mail in ballots. And yeah. now that they fa saw they could steal an election election with mass mail and ballots if you don't think that they're going to go with mass mail and ballots in four years you're you're crazy they're yeah going to. it's ridiculous they're going to do it in the like georgia senate race they're going to steal those two yeah. also from mail and ballots yeah uh, well so they might not they where, might not because yeah, the republicans like, own the yeah. legislators so they might not so. yeah i mean it, it's kind of a tough spot because everyone's celebrating of biden's win being some sort of representation of now the country is, you know, everything's great now. You know, it's like they've glorified Biden because he's not Trump. You know, I'm not trying to glorify Trump. Right. We're just saying Biden is a very corrupt candidate and he I does agree. have ties. And like, like people just, oh, why, why you mentioned the laptops and stuff like this stuff is real. Like there's corruption that has abounded through the last few, you know, Trump, obviously he came in and he, people were like, he's not presidential and all this. Well, he came into a Washington DC full of corruption. And, you know, not only is the media against him, the no. intelligence agencies were at first against him. Right. No. Which, uh, which isn't, you know, that's tough as well. He's Jeez, like the first, one of the first no. presidents to kind of come in there and have to be able to, t you know, talk shit about the intelligence agencies and talk shit about these people Nothing. and come off that way because they literally were against him, not in some fantasy way, but they really don't want him as a candidate. So, you know, it's uh, it's weird times, but I just think it's going to people celebrating today are going to be very sad when it takes weeks at minimum. I do think Trump will win in the courts. I just think that's a prediction, whatever. But even if he doesn't win there, you know, it's not no one's elected right now. It's yeah. there's so much going on with Pennsylvania and all these other states with legitimate voter fraud. It's just true. Right. No, I, yeah. I, I agree. Um, uh, I think that um, that. Um, I mean, people, again, this is an election that is truly decided by a handful of votes in Georgia, a handful of votes in Arizona, and then the corruption in Pennsylvania. And I think, Michigan. and Michigan, yeah, Michigan too. Yeah. And I think that there is a chance, I mean, I'm not, I don't, I don't know if it depends what the court said, that, that there can, if, if he's able to show it, you know, if he's able to prove it, um, this election is far from over. But I, yeah. I mean, listen, we're not a sore. I'm, I'm not a sore loser. Are you a sore loser? I don't. I mean, if Biden, I don't. I mean, I, since I don't support a specific candidate, you know, it's not about winning and losing. Right. Um, but like, you have to look at the specific election in each one and think, okay, what's really going on here? Right. Um, yeah, I just think 
not like exactly like 2000, but this is just going to be, I feel similar where the Republican candidate will win in the courts, but mm -hmm. it, it's, it's still very different um, on, yeah. on a deeper level. I, I don't know. I, I just think that um, him having the Supreme Court, there being a lot of legitimate voter fraud evidence. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the issue with the media just announcing Biden as president today and all these early predictions is when if you know, it's going to take weeks, but if Trump wins, now we have a lot more divisiveness in the nation because mm -hmm. now everyone who was so hopeful about Biden and, you know, sucking Biden's dick. Now, when Trump wins, you know, that's what the Civil War, that's what leads to a type Civil Absolutely. War type situation, you know, and we haven't really seen great things from BLM or Antifa. So we, mm -hmm. we're not, you know, um, yeah, yeah, according, it's, it's, yeah, uh, according kind of like lose lose now at first, but. According to BLM, according to the CNN and MSNBC, BLM is a peaceful protest, and according to Biden, Antifa is an idea. What do you say to that? Yeah, it's just, it's just, uh, it sucks how they kind of take these movements, right, and it just becomes corporate, and then they it uses it's to radicalize people. You know, people are like, oh, but it's a good message, and yeah, the message is what's not important, it's not this specific organization. Mm -hmm. That if you like look at their websites and stuff. There, there's nefarious things going on. It's not about, you know, the Democrats are always claiming they're the party of that, you know, yeah, racial the party of love. And you, they're the party of hate. <laughs> they're they. Yeah. I mean, they're the ones that honestly are being more divisive and race baiting and Absolutely. using media to, you know, yes, there's anecdotal things where, you know, someone gets shot or but like people aren't even always getting the information about what happened besides the yeah, media. So like the media, get radicalized, people, you know? I talk to people on the left and their answer is, well, what about uh, the kid in uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin that shot those three people, the white supremacists? And I, see, this is a pure, that's a pure example, okay? Yeah. Uh, you know the story on that. You, Kyle Rittenhouse, okay? Yeah, this was pure fucking self-defense. All the videos show self-defense. I mean, yeah. there's, it's the guy literally, was- It's literally a video of- you know, he's getting chased away and by trips, you know, and left, the guy, left people yeah, and they're me. yelling, he killed someone, right? They're, they're making people chase him. He didn't, he hasn't killed anyone yet. Yeah. The video is him. He falls to the floor and two guys, one with a gun and one with like a skateboard is trying to hit him in the head right. are running straight at him. And that situation was self-defense, you know, to call every, you know, one on the right, just white supremacist uh, or QAnon. That's right. just the tactic of media to label situations Correct. for these people to and, be able and to pack the, the, the and just... I, be more divisive like and, it's just divisive and now that the once the election is completely over once it's the, the trump concedes in about a month okay yeah. if he loses okay that that kid's gonna get released from jail this was all political it was this kid didn't do, this kid was like like cleaning graffiti this kid was a stand-up kid right they just they used his image to this is the picture of the right and they're just rat you know white supremacist yes right. he had a gun you know but that alone him trying to protect stores from looters or whatever he was doing mm -hmm. that alone is not enough to just say white supremacist just because mm -hmm. he's white and has a gun like he wasn't trying to go kill people the right. video shows that that specific situation was self-defense it just was yeah so That's it shows you how the meat the media is just so divisive that it's really the most it. sinister aspect. Of it the is. Thing. And then I tell people again, you know, I, the reason why I support the right and and not the left is because of the media. I I was I was pulling for Trump and wanting Trump to win for one reason only. I know if he got four more years, that media would have been held accountable. And um, yeah. I, I and now they're going to go back to their lying uh, propagandizing lying selves, and uh, yeah. no, and now they, you know, they, they, the, they, they, the, the people in social media do donated hundreds of millions to the Biden campaign. You know why? Yeah. Now they can consist continue to censor people consistently to to, to stop the conservative message from getting out and, and make yeah. up shit. And uh, we live in a banana republic. We literally live in North <laughs> Korea. I've been saying it since 2016 when I knew how bad the media was. But it during Trump's presidency, yeah. it became a complete laughing stock. I mean, Trump would yeah. say one thing. I'd listen to his whole speech. Then I'd turn on CNN and they would portray it as something he never said or did. They would just they yeah. would cut clips and spin it their way. And then put, people would watch it and say, look what Trump did. I'm like. Are you crazy? I'll give you an idea just to give you an idea. So um, one there, during the beginning of the, uh, the the riots with the George Floyd thing and stuff, um, yeah. you know, Tucker Carlson exposed, uh, you know, when they came after the 
uh, McCloskeys who are trying to defend their house, and they and they and they said uh, if they you know if they can, if the if their leaders won't support them, they're not going to support you. They're going to support black uh, and Black Lives Matter is going to come for you, right? And he said if they don't, whatever. Then I watched. Yeah. Then I showed Daniel. I said, Daniel, watch Tucker Carlson. He's like. Oh, he's a racist. I go, a racist? What do you, he's never said a racist thing in his life. Then he sends me a clip of this exact thing I was talking about that just says, Black Lives Matter is coming for you, right? They cut out <laughs> all the things that he said, why they're going to come for you if they don't change. They're fucking evil, man. And that's, yeah. that's my problem. OK, I want like you, you see my tweets on the Internet. I don't care if Trump wins or loses. All I ask everyone is to stop following the fucking media and fucking just follow a little bit of right wing media uh, a couple hours a week and realize what's going. Yeah. Don't be a sheep. Don't listen to what everybody's telling you. That's all I ask my followers that listen that follow me is don't be a sheep. You know, and yeah, see what's going that's on. all I'm trying to do, you know, and I'll just get a little upset and swear. But a lot of it is just like you'll post something on Twitter and because it's so left leaning, you get like 90 trolls. Some are just bots and some saying the same shit. You're crazy, you know, right? or like, where's the evidence? And it's like, there's so much evidence that it's like, you should just, I want you to go off this and go do a little research right. and see that I'm not trying to like, what, 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 well, why am I trying to trick you? I just want to kind of expose um, just the sort of way of thinking that's kind of taking our nation down. I'm just looking at the media, these small edited clips, shorts, you know, span memory, mm -hmm. you know, like, and just kind of get radicalized through really quick clips and non non factual context for all these stories and well, you know it's just a lot of it's a lot of bullshit I mean, and it, uh, they, you know they showed know, that was, six thousand votes in a county in Michigan there was a glitch that went for and it went for Biden instead of Trump well that that software's in all the swing states they, this needs yeah. to be all checked out I mean listen yeah. it's hard to believe trump turned out 71 million votes and you're telling me some brain dead guy that never campaigned who's running <laughs> on nothing okay who is got got seven million more votes than obama are you are you <laughs> kidding no, me it's, there's it's, just no really legitimate chance like his rallies, you know, yeah, okay, COVID, COVID, but right. like if they had a lot of people, they would have just social distanced them in a bigger area. Like of it, course. the support for the campaign, especially near the end, you know, yes, there's the left that are just going to stick with him forever, but he was like, Trump was gaining so much support this last year or two just because of people honestly just seeing past this like lie, you know, right. this mainstream lie. Um, again, not to glorify Trump, but like, exactly. honestly, we know he has in, a lot of issues. He's, he's been in office for four years. Like, what are people claiming went so bad? The riots, was that him? Nope. COVID, was that him? Nope. No, like, in, you know, he honestly didn't want to wear a mask at first and kind of knew it was bullshit, but he has to pander. He has to talk a little shit. He has to, you know, um, but he knew, like, they know what's going on. It's just strategy and counter strategy, right. you know? Um, that seems very difficult to come into the presidency and then have to go against media, you know, at every turn. Every um, turn. Which the Russia. They call be. him a Russian agent for two and a half years that worked for Vladimir <laughs> yeah. Putin. And 51, yeah. per, at one point, 63% of the fucking left believed that. Think about that. Yeah. Think well, about I mean, that. To, I mean, to conceptualize that, I feel like, they, like these guys have connections. Like, you know, the, it's not like these guys have never taken money. Right. right, like right, they're yeah, these course. guys are puppets still. Presidents are still puppets. Yeah, but you still see what policy wise is better for the country. What is going to be less divisive? And the media, mm -hmm. it literally is so divisive that it, how could you side with a candidate that is well, represented by the media? And that's it's what I told like, Andrew I Barber. I said straight yeah. out, I can't support a candidate that the media has gone out of their way to basically open. Uh, Sig went off to just glorify, know. really. I mean, hey. you, like to just say that you, Biden's just this old man. He's nice. He's, you know, for the Americans. And then Trump is just like this complete lunatic. And no, he's just more interesting and memeable. And he, he has a different oration style of talking like, right. You know, he like he's not stupid. None of these guys are stupid. Right. They're they're not telling you they're not just in their speeches saying all they know. They can't. They have to kind of package everything. So, yeah. Yeah, it's going to take a few more weeks. And and listen, I literally watch two hours of left-wing media a week for the last yeah. five years. And I force myself to watch it. And I'm like, 
And it's always, what in the fuck are they talking about? That's completely yeah. opposite of, that, Trump didn't say any of that. Then they take his words, you know, when he makes one, when he likes to joke around and jest and everybody yeah. laughs. And then they they don't show that part. They cut it and then they, they put it up as, look at what Trump just said at his rally. Can you believe it? It's yeah. so, that's the most anti-American thing ever. And it's all a lie. It was never said. You see it. You know what I'm yeah. talking about. It's like, honestly, it's a big projection because the left has honestly gotten so sort of radicalized and sort mm -hmm. of far away from good values, honestly, that yeah. the media is projecting it onto the right. You know, it's just kind of the strategy right now. So it's yeah. sort of this weird stalemate. And, um, and, and but we'll, it's just sort of like a TMZ culture. It's just like, look at this funny little clip. Mm -hmm. And then we'll just have talking heads say how Trump's a racist for three hours. And then here's Jeb Bush. Oh, all of a sudden he's repping Biden and the Bushes are with Biden. And mm -hmm. cool. I don't want to be with a candidate who all these corrupt past politicians are representing Chris Christie's in the media now, you know, Jack, Jake Tapper, who is like, <laughs> was the head of Obama's NSA and the spy game yeah. is now just working for CNN and stuff like, sorry, but it's true yeah. that the CIA does plant people in media in Hollywood. It's just kind it's of unbelievable. Part of it. And it's called, yeah, look up, you know, Operation Mockingbird. That's one example of just where it was beginning, where if you can trick people's minds into glorifying a candidate or a fucking celebrity then you can get them to do pretty much anything or just ignore real Jeff, data i have one thing to say to you buddy thank you for being woken to the real world because yeah. i've been t trying to fucking wake up these poker players for the last four years oh, yeah. not about trump okay because I'm not gonna, Trump says, I mean, let's, well, I'm not going to lie. Trump has said some of the dumbest things and it's probably yeah. going to cost, it probably it might, it might cost him <laughs> the election. <laughs> he said some dumb things, but honestly, if you play a, a reel of Biden's things, oh it's my not God. only dumb, it's not only dumb, but it's creepy and weird. And look and at bad. my African American so, I mean, over it, here. It's actually look not even him. close if you actually, why you're the greatest? I don't know why Trump didn't just run a hundred commercials of Trump talking to those kids and Kids crawl mm. up my Biden legs. Talking to the kids, yeah, and, my, yeah, yeah. and they my my leg hairs grow when the kids crawl up on my legs. Yeah. And I remember I tweeted that one out once, and Eric Crane fucking texted me, "Why are you putting out fake videos and lies?" I go, <laughs> "Dude, this is real. Yeah. I know Sorry, that, it's real." Yeah. That, and now any video that you show negative Biden during the camp, the fucking Twitter was taking it down. We are oh living God. in a fucking yeah. North Korea. It's unbelievable. <laughs> You just get attacked for being outside of that Biden mainstream bubble. You just you just do, uh, especially on Twitter, Twitter, you know, Twitter, Facebook, it's Instagram are, are big tech and they're, you know, hand in hand with media right now. It is media, it's social media. It's more important almost than news okay. right now. It's similarly as important. So, yeah. OK, yeah. so what else, let me ask you. So what else you've been doing? What have you been doing with poker? Poker wise, like playing on these apps a little bit, some cash, not no live yet, but thinking about it this month. And yeah, uh, yeah like poker coaching, just studying, you know, getting my shit up and, Good. you know, Good. we'll have a World Series next year. Might be mandate masks, but just kind of just don't want to get too stagnant with poker and keep on studying. Basically. Yeah, I was doing really good yeah. for a while. Uh, COVID was real good to me. I did real well, but they kicked me out of every home, every private game there is. Uh, so you feel um, good because he crushed them. Yeah, because I just crushed them. You so, still uh, <laughs> and I have my own home game for a while. We're starting it back up this Friday. I'm uh, doing a three thousand dollar free roll uh, into the home game uh, tournament. Uh, what is so, that? Where is that? What is that? That'll be um, what it, what it, it basically is. Is um, we are going to uh, we're running. Uh, we never had tournaments in my home game. I run it over on uh, Kings. And I have my own private room, and um, uh, we had, we just okay. added tur we just added uh, tournaments, and so um, I'm going to. Uh, we had a problem where some idiot uh, lost his money, then tried to put a claim in with PayPal, and they shut my PayPal down. So I took I have to get everything situated uh, so we can uh, fund the the room again. I we play one two. Two four no Linux limit, games. yeah. One two two four no limit and PLO, and then I play uh, four eight t with a twelve kill Omaha eight. You know, it's a small room. Right. You know, we don't want. I don't. Cool. I didn't want it to be big. I don't want to be be swinging and people cashing ten twenty thousand in and out. You know, make it. You know, yeah. where it's like mostly three four five under ten thousand. You know, so uh, nice. you don't have to really kind of worry about. It. So we're going to be running a free roll next Friday at seven p.m. 
And uh, you, you definitely got an invite to the free roll, buddy. Um, cool. And uh, so uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to open up the phone lines. Here we and, go. And uh, take some phone calls. And here comes uh, some. Here comes some uh, well, we, yeah, this should be fun. We're gonna, Not necessarily. We got a lot of Trump supporters that follow me. So it's going to be interesting to see what they want to say. So um, we just want reasonable people. Yep. Hit it. The mouthpiece. If you'd like to take part in our phone call segment, you can give us a call at 702 329 0480. And if you're a snowflake or a pussy and you Need don't want to talk to me, you can email me at mouthpiecepodcast at gmail.com. Also, follow me at the Mouth Mattiso on Twitter for times that our call in segment will be live. What up? Give me a call. Give Jeff a call. 702 329 0480. 702 329 0480. Me and Jeff, we want to hear what you guys have to say. Give us the questions, whatever the fuck y'all want. 702-329-0480. So, um, yeah, so what, that, that, that is a, a thing. Let's, let's do it. Welcome to the mouthpiece. This is Mike. And Mikey. Jeff Matson. Who's this? It's Viffer. Viffy, what up? I love you, buddy. How you been? <laughs> What's going on? Life is good. I haven't talked to you in a long time. I know. I heard you have a couple kids now, man. I've got two beautiful little girls. Oh, congratulations. Congratulations, man. Congratulations. Thank you very much. So what, uh, what's your take on everything there, buddy? Well, you know, I'm very open-minded, and, like, you guys seem like you know quite a bit about this, like, uh, media and everything and yeah. i was just wondering if you could give me like you guys say that like the mainstream media is one way and the 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 the, the, the what, whatever you call the other media. yeah what's going on way. in the world is like, the other yeah so what yeah, basically so, 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 so what i what i'm trying to figure out mike is like if, if the democrats first of all i think the republicans are a hundred times smarter than the democrats right okay like they're just smarter, like, and they're yeah, shrewder. I think right? so. Like, right? Like Mitch McConnell, like he's a smart, shrewd motherfucker. He's been around for a long time. Yeah, they're they're right? sm they're smarter. But you know what it is? Is okay. So in in 2016, they so, were. So, so, so hold on, hold on. I got a question for you. Then go. If the Republicans are smarter and shrewder, why are they not cheating? Right? Like, why are the Democrats cheating, but the Republicans aren't? They don't have the media. The media is all media. liberal left. You can't. That that's the reason why Hillary was so sure she was going to win because they had the media, but they didn't have social media. And once they realized Trump won the election through social media, they then got the social media to censor and take off. Are you ready for this? Four point six, not million, billion conservative impressions taken off and wiped away in social media. Okay, and then they were but, able to okay, censor. So everybody. where do I go? Wait. Like, but where do I go to read it's, about that? Because I, I'd like to see some proof behind that. Like, oh, I want to. So you're saying what, like, you're saying why why aren't the Republicans cheating like this election? Well, right. Like if the like, well, like well, the like, point is why Republican and the, the why Republicans like, probably, this year legitimately were poised to win this election. That's why they. It's not that they had to cheat. They knew that this voter fraud was coming, and they had to counter and they're setting up the courts to be able to win this. That's what they're doing. They, they, Trump legitimately had way more support than Biden just this year, like coming into the election. There's just like way more than four years ago and Trump still won four years ago. Right. So, and he's so, been the president so if for he's years. he's got more so. support, hold on, I got a question then. You say he yeah. has more support, like doesn't yeah. the popular vote tell you who has more we support? Don't, we don't elect people on the popular vote. That's not how that we. That's just plus, like plus we're getting hundred thousand old well, Biden but, ballots but, but, in the middle of the night. We're getting be, dead people but, voting, so but, it's not even a correct numbers yet. We're not even at the end of yeah. what the actual numbers are because there's so much voter fraud. Yeah, yeah. The cut. The, the, the Vote, so 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 there's so much voter fraud. Like, what are they doing? Like, how are they cheating? Well, it, th we're, th we're gonna find out how when Trump's gonna expose it. But what what's well, your we've answer? We've had dead now? people voting. We've so, had strange so, so, ballots so we all marked Biden to expose it. 
He says he's huh? got the he says he's got the evidence to expose it. So they listen on the right wing media, and I'll give you an idea because right. I follow. All right, it. hold on, Mike. Let me just look, before I forget this. Let me just ask one question. Right mm-hmm. now, I was watching your show, and you told me, "Hey, all I could ask from you guys is not to be sheep." Correct. Right? That's all I ask. Now, now do you think now do you think they're kind of being a sheep here? Because no. I'm asking you what they did to cheat. And I'm going to tell you. And your, 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 your gonna... answer, hold on, let me finish. Okay. And your answer to me is, well, Trump said they cheated. And no. we're going to wait for him to prove it. No, that's so not what that, that, that kind of seems like you're I'm being sorry. a cheat. I didn't mean that. I said it wrong then. Okay. So they, for the last six months, since ever they tried to push the mass mail-in ballots. That Trump, if you watch right-wing media, he's been saying for six months, this is unacceptable. They are going to try and steal the election through mail-in ballots. They're going to get mass mail-in ballots. We're going to have thousands and thousands of lawyers that are going to dissect every mail-in ballot to make sure, in, in all the swing states, to make sure that 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 all the IDs match the people on the voter rolls. He's been saying it in right-wing media for months, and this is what Jeff was saying, that they've they've prepared for this because they prepared for um, for, for litigation. Am I, am I saying this correctly, Jeff? Yeah, I mean, and, and ballots post-dated <laughs> after the fact. You got Ilhan Omar caught with all these ballots. You got all these videos all right, of so, different, so, different so, uh, so vote counters being way pro-Biden where they're throwing out Trump ballots and they're actually marking ballots themselves. You all you have to do is go and social are they, media. Where are they doing this at? Like, it's all over the they, 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 around the country. Are, you have are, to, are there police asking us? Asking us like doesn't God. really help because hey, you, you want me? Look at hey, the hey Viffer, media, you want me to uh, text you all these videos that we're talking about? Yeah. I'll you text them to you. No, oh. I don't want to be texted these videos. I want Why? to talk about them right now. Well, I, just, I mean, you I want me to show it to you? Questions, right? Yeah. Can we project the article with our eyes or what? So, like, like we all love Manny Pacquiao, and when Manny Pacquiao is going to go into a fight, he prepares with all his jabs, and he mm-hmm. hits this bag and everything else, and he watches the boxer's old fights. Mm-hmm. Well, President Trump and the Republicans have watched all the old fights from all these the, these elections from years past. But there's never been mass mail-in and, ballots. And one, thing, and one thing, hold on, and one thing that's always happened is there's always been more Democratic mail-in votes than Republican. Okay. Even Last when year, Trump won, you do understand this is votes. because hold on. Even when Trump votes. won yeah. last year or four years ago, there was even more mail in ballots for Democrats okay. than Republicans. They're, you're wrong. You're wrong. Do you understand how many mail in ballots do you think there was in twenty sixteen? I, I have no clue. Okay. Have uh less than two million. How many do you think there were this year? Okay. Close to ninety million. Okay. There's never right. been an election with mass mail-in votes. You have it's to separate always... the categories. There's absentee ballots. It's not just like all mail-in is the same. There's lots of different mm-hmm. kinds of ballots. Um, and yeah, when dead people are voting, yeah. people are voting three times. Yep. Someone who doesn't live there, you know, the signatures don't have okay. to match. To call the election this early is clearly showing the media's bias because there's a lot of legitimate evidence. Just look. Just look. Like, yeah, they could. They should have just. So, I agree. So, they should have so, waited. So hold on. Weeks. So you guys tell yeah. me there's legitimate evidence that dead people are voting. Yes. Where do I? Can you? Can you show it to me? Can you? I'll send it to you. Because I'd love to. Yes. I'll send it to you. I'll send you. I'll send you. I'll yeah, send you, you the just, whole thing. I'll send you a clip. Can you just put it on? Can you just put it on Twitter? Because like I, I don't want yeah. you to text it to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. sure there's a lot of. Other I think I, I already did. Go look at the. The issue is putting on Twitter. Twitter, you get all the trolls, and you you just get like a whole just shit show of. Yeah, I showed yeah. I showed where you pu- where in Michigan where you plugged in plugged in. There's a hundred and no, not a hundred, fourteen thousand, not a hundred fourteen, fourteen thousand uh, people over the age of one hundred nine that voted in the election this year. Okay, there's not that many fourteen thousand in the world living in a hundred nine. And, yeah. and where, how in do Michigan. I find that out? Uh, go to um, I, I I could send you the whole thing, uh, the link for the Michigan. Uh, we'll send you all the stuff. We'll send I'll send it all to you. Can I go you. on Fox News and read it? No, uh, th- it's been on there. Yeah, but they're, they're not showing that. But I'll send it. I'll send so, it to so you. Fox News doesn't show. Like, no, they have showed like it. They've like showed Fox it all. News would be all over. No, they have. Fox, they have. Fox News is still mainstream media, though. Yeah, like, but they're just, the they are. They're, they are News. mainstream media. They're just they just yeah. lean right. That's all. Anyway, yeah, and even on oh. paper, lean right, but maybe not in the in, in reality. But I'm not listen. Actually, I'm if not they actually saying, right. They wouldn't have called the election that yeah. early. I'm not wouldn't. saying that actually, when they count all these illegal votes or whatever, that Trump's going to win. I'm just saying there's going to be a lot of votes found to be fraudulent. I mean, thousands. Okay. 
That's all I'm saying. But Mike, Mike, but the only reason you guys are saying there's fraudulent votes is because Trump's telling you. No, that. we said it way like, before. Where, where? No, fuck Trump. On right wing media, it's got nothing to do with Trump. Fuck politicians. It's it's it, Jeff. Where where are these? Like where are these? Like okay. I just want to know. You need to follow like, people on the right. I got to send you a list of people that are working on the right. People, that people have millions and millions of followers, people that you don't even know about that have been exposing yeah. this for months. See, it's not like it's not but, like it just came out of the woodwork. Am I right, Jeff? It's not like it's hard to find evidence. It's more that you might find it and think it's biased or wrong, but it's literally so easy to find evidence for it. The idea is to look at the evidence on both sides, look at what's going on and interpret the information. It's not hard to find the evidence. It's hard to interpret it, period. Correct. That's a good, that's a very fair question. That's a very fair answer. Anyways, Biffer, we got a lot of people calling in, so I got to get some more calls. Yeah, we got to go to another call. Thank you, Biffer. I, I wouldn't want to talk to we somebody love you, buddy. people on the other side. Either. I love Thanks, you, Biffer. Man. I'm going to send you some info, okay? All right, Biffer. All right. You. Hey, guys, listen, right. at the end of the week, though, or at the end of the night, we're going to do a poll, and we're going to figure out which one of you guys wins Idiot of the Week. Idiot and of it's why? Pool's tied right now. Well, because we know what's going Bye, on. Listen, it, you know what's funny is for no, he hung up. He hung up. No, we hung up. Five years ago, like my friend used to tell me back in 2014, this is what he used to say: Obama was a commie and he was anti-American. <laughs> I'm like, what in the, this guy's on drugs, right? I'm like, what are you talking about? I knew nothing about politics, right? I'm like, Obama's a nice guy. Dude, you don't understand. He's out to destroy America. Well, when I become political and I started looking at what was going on, I'm like, holy shit, man. Everything this guy's been saying is, is truth, you know? And yeah. uh, it takes, a, you have to be willing to, to tell yourself the media's corrupt. Let me look outside the media for different information. If you do that, it, I 100% tell you, promise you will find the truth. Matter of fact, last week on the show, Daniel wanted to bet me. We, me and him are going to sit. We're going to watch two hours a week for seven days. I'm. He's going to watch Fox, and I'm going to watch CNN. He says Fox is 90 yeah. percent, 90 percent corrupt. I, I made a bet with him, by the way. He's yeah. He's not going to win that one. He's not going to win that. But Fox is still corrupt. But yeah. Yeah. Hello. Wait. Strelitz. We're calling somebody back that was that we whenever we miss a call we call them back because. All right. Well, we'll try another. Your call. I know we do. So. Uh, oh, here we go. Well, welcome to the mouthpiece. This is Mike and Jeff. What's going on? Hey, Mike. This is Jeff in Texas. Jeff, uh, what's up, bud? Good to see you guys fighting a good effort. So I got a question. Got to be honest, I'm sitting here in Texas. Been pretty down the last yeah. several days, like a lot of Americans. Yep. My question is, which of these things is more depressing and which do you think has a greater long-term impact? Number one, our First Amendment rights just slowly and then rapidly disappearing in front of our eyes. I think that's, the, the, I, that's of, the thing we need to fight for the most. That is that I got comes five, first. I got five things. I got five things, but okay. I feel like that's right. you're right. That's probably one that's of the top of the list. Go ahead. Right? Give me Big all five. Censorship. Number two, the fact that Americans were brainwashed, that we had a child groping, incompetent five decades, and a guy that clearly sold out to our nuclear adversaries and wasn't reported because of issue number one. Right. That in itself is depressing. That actually right. we know it wasn't seventy five million. But a big chunk did vote for this. Right. Like, what does a guy got to freaking do? Shoot somebody on camera mm -hmm. for us not to vote for him? Um, That's funny. Number three, the fact that <laughs> our country, our values, our history, our love of country is going away in front of our eyes. Trump yep. was going to get rid of, had already gotten rid of this critical race theory. I just right. saw now on Twitter that one of uh, Biden's immediate mandate is that we're now going to reinstitute basically going against everything that we said about even Dr. King, like we love each other for the yeah. content of our character. No, the critical race theory is pure racist. Teaching, pure racist, pure racist. We're teaching racist. our kids to hate themselves because of the color of their skin. I agree. How psychologically damaging is that to our country <laughs> to do that to our kids? Yeah. Okay. And the other thing that just greatly disturbs me, because I think Trump was going to be a freaking lie in the second administration because yeah. he knew what the swamp was. This yeah. swamp, the biggest winner of this election was the swamp 
okay, all the people that now exposing themselves, the fact that Ray had this laptop, this disgusting laptop that exposed Biden for what he was, mm-hmm. okay, with child for every bit of it, and it got protected this entire time. By the media. Swamp and big tech was the biggest winner of this thing, and the greatest loser was the American people and our democracy. So that's number four. Number five? The fact that our election was clearly, clearly uh, freaking compromised, like mm-hmm. incredibly compromised. I'm sure you guys know about all the things that people say, criticism, conspiracy theories. It's conspiracy fact. Yeah. There is too many improbable uncertainties. Like yeah. how in the hell do you get 138,000 votes dumped at 4 a.m. and 100% it, of them be for Joe Biden? Yeah, okay. in how Wisconsin, do you have I watched races? it. <laughs> how do you have races where the senator wins Okay, in the uh, Republican senator wins, but 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 you know Trump loses. It's a it's it's every one of these defiant. And they flipped, and the Republicans flipped here. fourteen House seats. There you go. That's all you need to know. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah. So I'm so, sitting here, and I'm not sure. As an American, I'm a veteran, mm-hmm. uh, full time poker player or good chunk poker player. But I am I am so deeply saddened. I'm saddened, and I'm angered. Okay, that this has happened in the America that we freaking love and that so many people in the poker community how many how can so no many smart people be so freaking clueless and brainwashed that's a good it's question disheartening, man what so what uh, what do you think the out of all the things he said jeff because uh we're going to answer this uh we're going to let you hang up we're going to answer it because we got to get to some other calls uh jeff uh, what i do got you, think? you it's okay thanks for calling i appreciate it what do you think is the worst no i appreciate fun? it you got it what do you think, Jeff? Yeah, I mean, um, it's a lot of bad stuff. The freedom of speech thing. It's just like we're in this new weird world where it's the information age, but now we're on these platforms like Twitter and stuff where that should count as freedom of speech. Like that's just like a social forum. So now that there's all this censorship coming from big tech when you have a certain opinion, yeah, that's clearly our democracy going yeah. down the drain. They want you know, when we're yeah. just ignoring – important information what why isn't it important what was on anthony weiner's laptop or hillary clinton like it's not about a meme it's not funny like it's just corruption runs it, it, it runs deep sometimes and it's important to not let one regime just have no accountability which yeah. is what happens you know um we well have the media we, just we, we know big to, tech is you know? all far left silicon valley they want to institute their way of life on everybody else and now with Biden in office, they gave him $500 million, and that's how they outspent the Republicans like eight to one in the last two months because they, they just donated yeah. all that money. And then the answer for that was you give us the money, you censor the conservatives, you censor uh, – and they censored the president of the United States, Jeff. <laughs> that's insane. Yeah, that's fucking insane. insane. Can you imagine the leader of the free <laughs> yeah. world is being censored by big tech? I mean, can, can people in their right mind put that together? And it ain't because he lied, okay? To them, he's lying because the media doesn't want you to hear the truth. Yeah, and all this, all this fact checker bullshit. People are like, oh, just check the fact checker or check this Reuters. Like, can you link me a mainstream article? It's just sort of this hey, echo this chamber. Just What's up, really Robert? Welcome to the mouthpiece. Yeah. You're on the uh, phone with me and Jeff. Oh, hey. Um, appreciate you taking my call, man. I wanted to talk some poker, if it's all right to talk yeah, poker. Yeah, absolutely. I know a lot of politics going no, on. let's talk poker. Yeah. Go ahead. So I'm going to play a live stream for the first time, and uh, I'm not – super nervous about it but still i thought you'd be a cool guy to talk to to get some advice um it's going to be a 15 30 08 uh with a half kill okay and the minimum buy-in is 200 and i was thinking of buying in deep for like 100 big bets so buying for 3k and uh, i'm pretty solid um i usually play pretty tight aggressive um i know not to chase the low and sit there and get is it you say PL, P- pl08 you said or 08? Uh, it's going to be fixed. It's, yeah, it's just 08. Yeah, I oh, played well, a big 15, O, which was pretty 15, I finally, finally got to 15, play. 15-30, yeah. limit 08. You don't have to buy it. You could buy them for like 500. I mean, shit, if you lose okay, 500. Right. It's not like you have to go all in. Yeah, you don't have to go all in. I mean, the most you're going to lose is like 200. Well, I hate, and yeah. And I hate the psychological aspect of having to dig it back out of my pocket. Oh, I'm the so same I way. I, I hate buying money. in short. Are you a short a stack? Yeah. Do you like buying in short or deep, uh, Jeff? I, I, I think Online, like... Uh, psychologically, yeah, I get buying in deep, but in like a limit game, it's kind of nice to only be in for this little amount and then just crush, right? Yeah. 
So there's also that too. Like I'll, you know, when someone sits down with way more than you in a mixed game and then you just crush them, you know, uh, and yeah, sometimes I, maybe I'll get I'll get a little more aggressive maybe when I have such a big stack. It's like the illusion of having being up. So yeah. I don't always I, in a mix game I won't always buy buy in big. I don't think it. Always yeah, really makes sense. I, I, I I um I'm the I, I, Phil Hamith has that way of thought. I like to buy in. Uh, uh, let's if I buy in a three six hundred game, I like to buy in for a minimum of twenty thousand. Phil buys in ten. He buys in like five in a two four hundred game, so <laughs> like two hands. Yeah. yeah, he buys a minimum. So I, I like to I like to buy in a little bit deeper, but um, yeah, that's what I would say. I've lost once. <laughs> nice, that's pretty solid. Well, what about the aspects of playing on a live stream? So they're going to show the whole cards, and it's like a twenty minute delay, I think. And uh-huh. I guess I'll get used to it the longer I sit. But uh, I've never really uh, done anything like that. It'll be fine, man. It's no big deal. It's just it's limit poker, man. You'll be fine. Oh, play you any uh, any any Mike's the best. Remember. Any strategy for 08? Any strategy? I know yeah. you don't like giving stuff up. Yeah, play play ace ace baby. <laughs> play play one two three, ten jack queen or king, and uh, right if you have like one two three nine and the ace mm-hmm. isn't suited and it gets raised and two callers throw it away. And, I would uh, say right. my advice. I would like I like three, but you know, make sure you're three betting enough hands pre. Yeah, and do it with more kind of like hands that can scoop like obviously ace deuce three four double suited you rather flat that yes um especially to get more okay. action behind but you want a three better hand like ace queen three four sometimes yeah. against like just the, a, the ace a, king a, an aggressive open or something yeah the ace yeah. king and the ace right queen in in 08 are just as powerful ace king is just as powerful and just as dominant over ace queen in limit 08 than mm-hmm. it that like just like uh hold them I mean, that's Plus, why yeah. it's so mm-hmm. important. Like, if you don't have, if you have ace three, um, like ace three, ace three, four, I mean, having a 10 or a jack with it, that hand traps you a lot. But ace, ace three, four with a king is like a three bet hand every time. Because, yeah. uh, and okay. if you get four bet, you know you're up against aces. So when the flop comes down, you know where you're at. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. 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 And you just want to, like, three betting well, just isolates, usually, you know? Yeah. And uh, in a game like Omaha, the, the equities run so close that just getting heads up in position, you've already like won there a little bit. You have yeah. you have good equity. You're in position. You're often going to get half just with some, you know, you'll get half randomly just with a bad low or like bottom pair sometimes. So, right. you yeah. know, getting heads up, nothing wrong with that in the right spots. And just one of the most. One, no, that makes sense. When Jeff won his 08 bracelet, he didn't have a clue. Now he's actually really good. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I never. I didn't. I won a peel away bracelet oh, yeah, uh, yeah. in 2015, but I. Uh, oh, yeah, I didn't really have a clue about a lot of the games in the beginning. That's for sure. Yeah. All right, my uh, man. That's pretty strong for a beginner. Hi, well, I appreciate <laughs> that's it. Awesome. Thanks for the call, and uh, tell all your friends listen to the mouthpiece, man. Appreciate hey, we got to get that new book out too. Yeah, I'm working on. It. I'm working on it. All right, my man. Right on. Take care. Later. Appreciate you. You got. It. All right, bye. What's your book? Strategy or just your life again? Poker, pain, and politics. How all three made me a better person. Oh, uh, I'll write that. I'll write the for the forward for yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, uh, and again, it's 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 not as much about what side of politics. It's about how I started caring about people in the real world and how much they're struggling. Yeah, no, no poker. Truth is no poker well. player has a clue about it either. They just they just say, "Oh, orange man, bad," you know, because welcome to the mouthpiece. Sweet. Is Mike? Hey, how's it going? Good, man. You're on the phone with me and Jeff Hello. Madsen. How's it going? Yeah, it's going all right. Yeah, I just wanted, I just wanted to call in. Um, I've been following Madsen's uh, Twitter, and I just want to say like it's he's right on point. You know, like no one's speaking up about all this tic tac tic tac. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I've I've watched some of these YouTube videos. Um, you know, and like I'm following along with all the things that are being said. There's evidence out there. You know, in regards to like the election, um, you know, just the, the whole pedophile ring that's going on, mm-hmm. just everything. I just wanted to know, get your guys to take on it more, you know, and like, and also like, you know, like people are searching on Google and not be able to find stuff and it's a shady. So well, like, they're I taking mean, it all down. Stuff, you know? They're taking it all down yeah, because no. they don't want people to get the real information. I mean, exactly. this is the biggest yeah. threat to the country and the world is is when when global elites are able to control the information that you're able to see you 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 literally won't know anything you literally won't know anything but the information they're telling you you know yeah 
Yeah, no, I've, I've been using uh, what's like the, the Duck Duck Goose or something like that. I've been using that search engine. Duck Duck Goose. Duck, oh, Duck, right. Goose? Yeah, yeah. You just have to know which uh, companies and what what which companies are being the worst when it comes to censorship, and you want to kind of support not that basically, and more back to like just open and free press and speech and journalism right now isn't open and free. It's just a bunch of like bullshit. So. Tic-tac. That's Tic-Tac. Yeah, for sure. Tic-Tac. Um, like, so how, how do we get this like out there and like, more exposed and, you know, get like people aware? That's what, that's what I'm saying. You know, like, I don't know how to get out, how to outreach to people. And, you know, like I, and I want everyone to understand, you know, like what you guys are saying and what I believe to be true. Well, I know it's true, and I, I, in, four years ago, I told people I was being shadow banned on Twitter, and the poker players looked at me like, you're crazy, Mike, you're a conspiracy theorist. Four years later, they're censoring the president of the United States. So how crazy was I, okay? So, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. You know, like, I want to bring this back to, like, the nation it used to be. You know, like, where our people you know what I mean? Like us. Well, there's a Back lot. To- I'm going to tell you right now, um, between me and you, uh, and I, uh-huh. I think I, I told Jeff this yesterday, uh, I'm very worried for our country. There's a there's a lot of people mobilizing right now that feel like they're stealing our country from us, and I just hope things don't get ugly. That's all. Um yeah. The rhetoric right now. I think Trump's rhetoric now is good. I didn't like how he, what he came to the— how he came to the mic on the first day, I thought it was really bad um, in the middle of a heated election. Um, but I understand why he did it. He had to show what was going to happen. He saw it going to happen, and um, and uh, it did. So um, uh, I, I did. But the uh, the rhetoric right now has got to be. We're doing what we can. I think that what's coming out of the Trump campaign right now is pretty good rhetoric. Would you agree with that, uh, Jeff? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're doing what they can because it's not like he can just not have a press conference. Like, he has to battle Biden getting up there and all the media, just the bullshit. So, yeah, when he went up there and kind of read off, like, from the paper, it was like, you know, he they just got to get him out there to start nipping this in the butt before there's so much... Well, you know, Cernovich right. thinks he should yeah. get 100,000 people rally in Georgia in the next few days because he's got to get if they don't hold the Senate seats. I'm going to tell you right now, because they're going to try and steal those Senate seats. And if we don't hold the Senate, then they're going to implement that radical fucking left wing end of America shit. So. Yeah. Yeah, we can't you know, let that happen. Yeah. Is, uh, sure. Most of this shit doesn't necessarily <laughs> always affect every individual, right? Just like directly, but in, in the long term, it does. Like, just it's just important stuff. It's not just about being divisive. It's about seeing who's making us feel divisive because of just yeah. kind of some brainwashing, to be honest. Any, anyways, we kind of got a little bit of a bad connection. We're going to let you go. We appreciate the call. No. Tick tack, tick tack, bro. Yeah, right. let's yeah. go. Thanks, man. All right, man. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, Gizmo is not Satan. Leave Gizmo alone. Where is my Gizmo? Where is my little boy? Oh, Your cat? he's sleeping. He went to bed. Hey, Mike. What's up? Welcome to the Mouthpiece. You're on with me and Jeff. What's going on? Not a whole lot. How you guys doing? Good, man. Good. Uh, what's uh, How are you? Doing okay, just uh, a little fired up, of course, about all this bullshit, you know. And even Vicker, man, I think he deserves a call back in a in a few weeks and give him the rundown on how shit works. He, you know, I don't know if he's being no, sarcastic uh, or condescending or what, but um, he, Viffer is a. I've known him for many years. Um, he he is kind of being condescending, but he he also will. He's not a fucking sheep. He will if I show him what me and Jeff know and literally show him the evidence like of how corrupt the media is, Viffer will believe, he'll look at it. He's not the type of person that just is a sheep. He's, like, well, he's very, he's just not like that. Like right now he is kind of being condescending and, and fucking with us. But when, when, uh, uh, when, I, when, we, when I show him what the things that I know that Jeff knows and I know, um, I guarantee you he'll, he'll look at it in a different mind. Um, you know, and I, I respect everybody's opinion. And you take a guy like Jeff, where he seems to be open-minded and somewhat in the middle. And yeah. but 
to, to Jeff, from what I can take so far, it's very blatantly clear that something's not adding up. And all the the liberals are just, they won't even comprehend the fact that there might have been, there's allegations of, of fraud. Yeah, but like, they're, they're, I mean, when their, answer, when their answer is, you can't make millions of ballots in fraud. There's no, they don't, they only have to fucking have 20, there's only, they only have to take 25,000 in three different states right. that are punched for Trump and flipping for Biden. Right. And that's the election. It's not, you're not stealing millions of, it's not widespread millions of ballots. It's right. 5,000 here, 5,000 here, 3,000 here too. Am I right, Jeff? Is that a fair step statement? Yeah, for sure. It, it's people can't comprehend like, oh, everyone's in on it. It's, it's more of, you know, why were these specific states halted all of a sudden? And then right. we need a week and two weeks. And why did like weeks ago, people pre- already predicted this. Like the media was already, already saying, it sounds like Trump won't concede even if he loses and Biden claims victory, you know, and then they claim victory for him prematurely. So mm-hmm. they know what's going on. Like the media knows what's going on. They're not they're not stupid. Well, they, they, and, and not the, stupid. the spooky being being uh, on the on the other side of things. It's almost spooky to me, too. You take a guy like Trump who's outspoken and has had a fantastic career, and now he's in, in the political world as being president. With him not saying anything and the whole party is sitting back, it, it almost gives me the, the, the sense that they're just waiting for the, the left to just hang themselves. And next week when they come out with all the allegations, um, I, I, I get this almost creepy sense that the, the plan they've put together, I almost wonder if they brilliantly set them up for failure with this whole deal. Oh, it's I mean, I, I, the GOP is just as corrupt as the fucking Dems. I mean, yeah. I mean, you get to see, see Trump went out, he saved the Senate, he got them 14 new house seats. And now that he's fighting for his, his political life, all, all of them, 90% of them crickets. Right. Because they, right. they 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 were always fucking phony motherfuckers. I what do you think he got nothing done when we had all the power in the first two years? It's because they're just as corrupt as the fucking Dems. They wanted an insider. They wanted Biden in office. That's why you hear saw all these Republicans. Oh, that, what do you think? Mitt Romney. He's a fucking typical insider. Do you see what he fucking tweeted out today? This low life piece of shit. This is a guy that, that never lived in Utah, ran as a senator in Utah based on his Mormon faith. Sto- went out there and people believe this idiot and all, all to try and st- all to stop Trump. That's the only reason why he ran in 2018. Cause it's, cause see, it's all about China. No, you don't understand. Everything is about China. All the money these people are making all goes back to China. Okay. With, with, with Trump in office, Trump was going to hold China accountable for the virus. You will be, nothing will be held accountable. Nothing will be done in China with fucking Beijing Joe in the office. Give me a break. <laughs> I absolutely agree. And what I want to bring to people's attention, and I don't know if it'll come into play or not, but the agency CISA, mm-hmm. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency that Trump put together in 2018, um, it's going to be interesting if that comes into play with the watermarks and, and apparently all the ballots are in the blockchain. And that's I what I'm feeling. reading now. I don't know how that's true. I have. What do you know about that? I've read that I, that I, he put that together with the watermarks in these ballots on purpose, just in case this could happen. I have no idea. How true that, it's true that. I've seen live accounts that are stating the watermarks are, in fact, in the ballot. OK, um, I've read that, too. Do you so, know any info on that, Jeff? I would say that it's kind of common sense that Trump's campaign, knowing that this voter fraud was coming, like they're, this is the, you know, this is the counter. They know that the Biden team has the media and stuff. So, Mm -hmm. you know, that's why everyone's so like, oh, Trump's like 50 to one to win now. They don't see that he, he has these programs in place. He has the Supreme court. He knows what he's doing litigation wise. And um, he's really just going against the media right now. You know, that's like the main thing. And, we're, we're, we're heading towards some divisiveness if, you know, it's going to take a few weeks and if he wins, like, the left isn't going to be happy. They're going to be less happy now than if they just waited to call the election. So, yeah. I mean, really, with, with the intelligence that we have access to and, and Trump with his career and his level of intelligence and, and being business savvy, 
I would play. I would call him a fool if he didn't implement something knowing that this was coming. So I, the way that they're structuring things right now, I have to believe that that individual prepared for this correctly and is playing the cat and mouse game right now and letting them have all the glory. He knew it was coming. He knew it was to go to litigation. He, he had to have implemented some sort of security knowing that he had months or years to prepare. I mean, we'll see, right? Yeah, but yeah we'll see. This is um, the biggest crook fucking shit I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, Unbelievable. And, and listen, I'm people think, oh, you're just a sore loser because you want to Trump. No, in the right wing media, he has been telling us what was going to happen for weeks. And right? yeah. they, they've got thousands of lawyers. They've got a, a billion dollar legal team set to dissect every fucking vote. And they will. This is a yeah. see the difference between these other people that go down and just concede and let whatever is Trump knows he said it for fucking ever and this is not he didn't just come out fucking the other day and said it people in right-wing media people who people who are not brainwashed by the liberal left have we know what trump's been saying for weeks about what was going to happen so it's not like it he just came out team. it happened exactly what he said was going to happen i mean even so the left, so even the left was predicting to that, it too you know like it. It, it's already been yeah yeah I mean, they they yes, they, they like to put the it. they like he had to, to have prepared. They love to put the the message out about Bernie Sanders. Look, Bernie predicted to a T that it was going to be a red mirage, and that okay, they knew yeah. it. They knew it. They yeah, knew they what knew. they were going to yeah. do. I mean, Bernie Sanders didn't just randomly guess, and they just knew what was going to happen. Like yeah. it's just they and, don't just wing it when it's the most important presidential potential election of all time like Correct. they both have intelligence on each other they and know th there, there's so many counter strategies that's that's part of this that's not just and, and people know, say i'm crazy people. people say i'm crazy because because in october 25th 2019 biden the most brain dead fucking person in history tweeted out we're not prepared for a pandemic and he got rid of this and this and it's trump's fault like how did he know how do you know? We haven't had a pandemic right. in a hundred well, years. Why is he tweeting about that three uh, yeah. three months last uh, in October of 2019? We hadn't had a pandemic in a hundred years. How do you know? He just yeah, guessed. People are, people are thinking it's prediction when it's really complicity. They knew. They fucking knew, yeah, dude. No doubt. That was the I'm only so way to get Trump out of office. Did everybody please. forget that? Did everybody forget that Gore ran around thinking he was fucking president? For, for 30 days? Yeah, they all forgot. 2000? The liberal left all sided with him. Remember that? So That's uh, right. I'm not saying Trump's going to win because he's a pretty big long shot, but I'm just saying uh, if he does, we're going to be, it's it's civil war 1,000%. There's no way out, right? I mean, right, Jeff? I mean. Yeah, absolutely. and I mean, I, I don't, it's not that I want him to win, but I'll, I'll just predict that he's going to win in the courts. It just feels like that. Just looking at the data, it really does. I don't think that the veil of like, not seeing all this information lasts so long, like with the American people, like people aren't that stupid. Um, I'm not saying the left is stupid, but some of them have been radicalized by media and that, some that of that's them, not half of them, a majority of the population. So, yeah. yeah. Look, I mean, yeah. I mean, the, the reason why hey, everybody, Jeff, I respect you. I respect Jeff for, for not only your, your poker career and, and your ability on that side of things, but to be open-minded as an American and, not pigeonhole yourself like this radical fucking bullshit. And I guess you could say the same for the left for certain individuals. I, I don't want to go that far yeah. with it, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Be open-minded yeah, in, in these circumstances. And, jo and Here, I'll, I'll go with it. A, I'll a, say a stronghold. it. I'll say it. Justin Bonomo is completely radicalized. There you go. I'll say it. There you go. There you, okay. there's, there's about a list you know, of 10 or 20 people that are Yeah, there's about so 10 like, of them, no, but he's, he's number there's one. It's, it's and, and, he was he was crying opinion, election I, I, night. He was tweeting crying election night. Please give me my one time, my one time, please. He he won like twenty two yeah, yeah. million, and he was crying for his one time. Was some, we got another call. We got to go. Yeah. What? Thanks, Mike. All right, all right, guys. Say? Take care. You. Later, man. Okay, what? Can't call. Kate Hall. Oh, Kate Hall. Yeah, Kate Hall. She's Kate radicalized. Hall. All right. She's definitely radicalized. Um, okay.
I mean, none of them would ever, ever watch one minute of right wing media. And I watched, like, watching Bill Maher last night. They had some guy on there, like Malcolm Nance or something. This guy was so radicalized, like, so convinced that Trump, he's like, oh, these 70 million are, are putrid. They're racist. Think about that for a second. 70 million people, 50% of everyone that lives in the United States are racist. Think, think about that statement. And people believe yeah. that. They're spewing that shit. It's so it's divisive. It really is. So they divisive. Can't. Welcome they to the Mouthpiece. It's Mike and Jeff Madsen. What's up? Hi, Mike. This is uh, Aaron. How are you? Good, Aaron. How are you, man? I'm doing well, thanks. I'm watching the uh, podcast. I just thought I'd call in because uh, there was a gentleman calling before about the uh, CISA. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the department that was set up by Trump uh, a couple of years ago. Right. Um, I just want to ask you, because I don't know if you guys watch, do you guys follow Alex Jones or InfoWars or anything I, like that? I used to a lot. Now, the thing about Alex Jones is he says a lot of truth, but he also makes up a lot of shit for, to, to make money. So you have to decipher what he says is truth and what he says is not true. Um, he was really good on the Joe Rogan podcast uh, last week. I don't know if you watched that. Did you watch that? I did try to watch it, but... I found it kind of difficult to watch, honestly, because um, I just felt like Joe Rogan was trying to pick him apart, right? In a way that well, he had to try and force, right? Well, he had to try and pick him apart because he's got such a big platform. He couldn't just let Joe Rogan go on there. I mean, not, uh, Alex Jones go on there and spoo shit that's not true. And pretty yeah. much, then he, every time he tried to pick him apart, and then he'd go fact check him, and it always would come up true. That's why when people say, like, think about this man, he's had his whole life destroyed, his whole business destroyed because of freedom of speech. Think about that. They didn't like what he was saying. Think about that. Yeah. We're in the land of the free. We're in America. We're, listen, I'm Jewish. I hate Nazis. I hate white supremacists. But if fucking some, if they, if 50 of them want to, uh, march down my street and say fuck the Jews, fuck the blacks. That's their fucking freedom of fucking speech. That there's a it happened in Skokie, Illinois, and I think it was 1974 where the ACLU uh, ruled in favor of them. We are now being censored. This is not America. As difficult as it is to to you know say something like that, right? It, it really needs you know people's rights need to be. Uh, protected and people's right to to speak their minds and, yes. and not be persecuted for it needs to be protected. But what I really wanted to bring up was something that I had found out through one of those um, network shows that Alex Jones runs on his platform. Mm-hmm. I believe um, one of his junior level people who also has his own show had on uh, Steve Pachanik. Are you familiar with him? I know the name. Uh, are you familiar with that name, Jeff? No. Yeah, I've heard the name, but I'm not sure. Okay. I'm going to be honest. So I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to give the best background on Steve Pachanik, but he has some sort of uh, intelligence ties, CIA ties. Um, I think he was um, a key psychologist or uh, psychology expert um, having to do with the CIA in prior administrations, mm-hmm. I think going back a pretty long time. But anyway, um, he came on to one of these shows on Alex Jones's you know, InfoWars mm-hmm. network, um, and he said that, you know, uh, from his intelligence ties, which he no longer actively is associated with the CIA or other intelligence agencies, but people that he knows are, and they supposedly told him that this QFS, you know, um, encryption was put in as, in the form of a watermark on these ballots and everything, and it sounded all convincing and whatnot. Yeah. So that gave me some hope because um, it's not so much that, that the opponent, you know, the opposing side, the Democrats can win. That bothers me. It's it's the whole situation that surrounds. You mean it. the fact the that they the corruption? I mean the this. fact that China sent us the virus to the world on purpose and with one goal only is you take out a couple million, you get economic dominance, you get control of the USA back where they're working with you and they're sending you all kinds of money and to destroy our country. You mean things like that? It's horrific. I mean, terrific, people. Yeah, when I say that something like more. that, people think I'm crazy, and I would think I'm crazy no, I, I too. I know you're not crazy, but you need to. I that, ask people to that. look into what I just said because just that's it. Yeah. That's all you need to know. You know. Yeah. Uh, well, basically, where I was going with this, though, and uh, once again, I'm not going to say that there's 
that I agree with everything that you say or think, but yeah. certainly with respect to those things, I, I really do believe that. Or if not for sure, I believe that it's a very strong possibility. So mm-hmm. what, where I was going with this is that Steve Pachenik, someone who Alex has had on his own show as a trusted authority, mm-hmm. and who this junior level person had on his show, who provided this encouraging information, um, you know, basically was confirming or was the initial person to release this information. Um, and then QAnon was running with it, or maybe they were the ones yeah. who originated it and he was just a person confirming it as an authority figure. Yeah. But what I found interesting was that the following day, um, I was just perusing the, you know, the InfoWars website and there's another host he has on, um, I think David Knight. Mm-hmm. Um, and he does, I think, an earlier morning show. And he said that he thinks that that was a crock of, you know, yeah, you know what? Yeah, I, I, I think it, it might be a crock inaccurate. of shit, too, so I don't know. Um, I, I so, did so, see it come and, across, and other, but I don't know nothing about it. The, the last thing I just wanted to say is that, you know, from everything that I can tell based on my research, independent of all that stuff, is that even if Trump or the administration or the RNC wanted or – you know, Department of Justice wanted to put in place some sort of mm-hmm. preventative measures for tracking these ballots. I don't know that they could do that so easily since the states, no. from everything I that agree. I can tell, I think it's get a bunch those of bullshit. ballots manufactured independently yeah. from the federal government. So I don't no, see how that's possible. I'm with you on that. I don't think it's possible. I think, uh, and again, you, people don't realize it's not, you don't, this is not m- massive voter fraud, Okay. But you own, this election is decided on 20,000 ballots flipped. That's what people don't understand. So this guy is going to win by about the entire election by about the same 73,000 votes that Trump won. Okay. The only difference is, is Trump won. And it was all all but like uh, maybe a million ballots in Arizona because they, they've been using mail-in forever was, was all – on voter was all on voter uh, uh, ba- ba- they were all they were all on the machines and stuff. You see what I'm saying? So so it's um, yeah. There's never been a mass mail-in ballot. And as soon as I heard them talk about mail-in ballot six months ago, I'm like, oh, that was their plan to steal the election the whole time. And uh, and I mean, Trump turned out 72 million fucking people, and he and he's give me yeah, a, that's he lost. pretty impressive. Yeah, for a guy that's well, been, let, that's let been a racist but- for four years, you know. <laughs> I, I don't want to. I, yeah, <laughs> we could go on and on. And trust me, yeah. there's a million things I'd love to discuss. Yeah, we got to get to another. Before call, I go, go, ahead. I, go ahead. I know uh, the last thing I just want to bring up to your attention is, um, you know, when it comes to, you know, the the uh, the substance of the case. Even if there's substantial evidence, the question, the thing that I'm concerned about will is, the courts take will it? the people in the court system, will yeah. they actually be open-minded enough to accept this well, and do something about it? We'll find it? out. We'll find out. We'll find out. All right. All right, my All man. Right, thanks, thanks for guys. the call. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Yeah. And again, I'm not I'm not going on here saying, oh, the election's rigged and Trump's going to win. I mean, I'm just saying you need to have an open mind. People on the right, this has all been circulating around right-wing media for six fucking months that the mainstream media will not tell you about. And it's not like Trump just came out of nowhere and just threw that out there, you know? Right. Uh, yeah, it's just about like a lot of people are in their emotions a little too much and they're a little bit there's just some illogical sort of approaches to taking in all this information like, oh, the TV said it. And then, you know, you make the conclusion before the research. It should be the other way around. You know, we yeah. shouldn't be taking what we see on TV as just like right away um, legitimate. You know, these people don't care about us. They're, they're creating this story. Yeah. Um, it's it's all about, really it's all about creating a story. And um, if you if you follow the media enough, I mean, you know it. And like I said, I didn't care. I don't really care if Trump won. All I ask is the poker players that follow me is to fucking don't be sheep to the mainstream media. Whatever you see on television, immediately tell yourself it's not true and then go do research on it. And you're going to find out that 80 percent of the shit they say is a fucking lie especially on CNN and MSNBC, yeah. right? Yeah, it's devious. Um, and, you know, if, even if, if Trump wins, I mean, so let's say in a year, there's some really big corruption he has or scandal. I mean, we're going to talk about it, right? Mm-hmm. This is not, people think it's partisan if like they're, you know, you're not with their candidate or it seems like, oh, you just want Trump to win. I'm just, we're just trying to look at the truth here, honestly. Every election is different. And this one, you know, I, I feel like the evidence is there and the Supreme Court is going to be relevant. 
Yeah, so. well, well, that's why he had to get her on the Supreme Court for the election because he, he yeah. knew what was coming. He told everyone. Welcome yeah. to Mouthpiece. This is Mike and Jeff Matson. How's it going? What's up, guys? What's up, Jeff? What's going on, Mike? What's up, buddy? How you doing, man? Where you from? Uh, Sacramento, California. Cool, cool, man. What's up? What's up, bro? Uh, I'm just about watching this bullshit uh, speech. Uh, it's gonna be elected. That's not really elected, you know, Biden. Yeah. And uh, I'm just devastated. You know, I mean, like, I don't believe it. Like, election night, I had a bunch of drinks and nice dinner, and then I went to bed. It was like 1:30, and I'm like. Trump got it. He got Florida. He got Ohio. He's fucking up huge in Michigan, Wisconsin. You know, Pennsylvania was yeah. just over eight hundred thousand. But, but like, here's the thing oh, that there's a here's the thing that really is the fishiest part. Okay, this is what I want people to look out. Forget what me and Jeff are saying. Forget just like amp- clear your head for a minute and go back to election night. Okay, the yeah, betting yeah. markets knew there was a lot of late ballots coming in. They knew how many counties were counted, okay? The the whole, the, the Chinese yuan fucking completely crashed, okay? They didn't crash because they knew there were ballots coming in. All of a sudden, the counting stopped. It stopped at like 9.30 West Coast time, 12.30 East for three hours. Yeah. It started back up and 90% of the votes came in for the other side. Am I right, Jeff? Is that what happened? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I mean, legitimately, like, why would the election stop right there? And think about if Biden won this election straight up, the media would race to just report it the night of like why they have the mail in ballots there. Oh, yeah. It's standard to just wait eight days to count them. Right. They know what's up like they're they're um, They would have called it right away if Biden legitimately got all these, you know, day of, you know, votes that but he didn't. Everything halted. Right. And then we just got started feeding a bunch of bullshit from mainstream media trying to just not actually talk. I about mean, did, why you, did, did you see the look on Biden's face at around midnight? He looked like he wanted to die. And all of a sudden, 90 percent of the votes came in. It wasn't like, yeah. well, we're, we still hold. He said we got hope. There's a lot of votes left. Everybody needs to relax. Right. If he, yeah. Come on, man. I mean, I'm not, I hate when I say that because it sounds like him. <laughs> come on, man. Come on, man. It's, like, it's, yeah. and it's like we we all we all wake up and at 6 a.m. all of a sudden now there's like all these votes that went all Biden. It's like you always wake up to some, yeah. you know, we, me and Matt shift, Clans, not even statistical. We we like, figured it out that that with all the votes that were left in Wisconsin, Biden needed like 91 percent of the vote and he got it to win Wisconsin. Like I watched well, the ballot that? drop. Like a, they they have the squad car at like four in the morning delivering these votes. Did you see that one, Jeff? And the next thing you yeah. know, it was one hundred and thirty-one thousand to nothing for Biden for him to take. I just yeah. it's just it, they okay. Let's just say if what me and Jeff are saying is complete. Let's just say we're completely crazy and we're nuts. Okay, which I know we're not. We're not crazy. Okay, but let's just say we are. Look at the illusion. You think about what has to happen. For this to happen this way, you have to be completely stupid, brain dead to not well, see how, what's going on. Wasn't there more uh, votes in Wisconsin than there were that registered? Well, that I maybe? heard that, but I have not. I yeah. I, I, I heard that, that, but but the media uh, stopped reporting that, so it. I don't know if that's no. true yeah. or not. I mean, I think nationwide there's been almost any kind of every kind of anomaly in the sense of like too many voters, dead voters. You know, the, the ballots, oh, they voted for Biden, but they didn't vote like the Senate race lo- was law. Lo- you know, it's just nonsensical statistics that in these data dumps that don't make sense unless there's some sort of strange foul play. And it's it's really just about the evidence. We're not just coming up with this. I don't know. Yeah. All I say is give. Listen, they've had their chance. Give Trump a chance to prove his case. If he doesn't prove yeah. his case, he'll concede and, and we'll move on. You know, but when everybody sits there and thinks that me and. Me and Jeff are fucking crazy or we're partisans. That's just we're just saying, look at the evidence. But people yeah. on the right, we we every we've we've be, we expected this for fucking months. We expected this, you know, it the, this is one of the dirtiest the election office. cycles. I mean, by far, it's yeah. frozen and they don't move. And Trump's out leads and they just sit there. And I, I go home from work and I look and there's no update. It's just sitting at 86%. Well, here, here's what I like exactly. to tell people, okay? There was 103 million people that voted early. There's going to be about 100. That means only 47 million voted 
in on uh, for in the election where Trump got two to one of those votes. So that means of the 47 million that voted uh, at that Trump got uh, what uh, 47 Trump got what like uh, 30 32,000. Yeah, about 32 million mm-hmm. votes. Okay, so the other 40 million came from the other side, 40 out of a 120. So basically, Trump should be getting 37 percent of the votes, and he's only getting like between 10 and 20 percent of the late vote. Is that a, is that uh, right? how can, you see what I'm saying? How can Florida count 11 million votes in one night, but yet all these other states need a week. Oh, yeah. And how do they call California after like zero percent reported? Not that it just shows the bias. It's not that Trump was going to win California. It's just that they immediately zero percent reported California instantly vote instantly count all these votes in Florida. Then all these states, let's wait three weeks. It's like, yeah, because if it it, it, it shows you if they show if they show Trump winning state after state after state after state, they can't fucking steal it. Okay, what do you think? Everybody on the right went crazy on Fox News for calling Arizona. Meanwhile, there's over a a hundred thousand votes left. Okay, and Trump's now down only 19. And I'll tell you what. I pray he wins there, Arizona so Fox News gets destroyed because they're just as corrupt as the other side, okay? Yeah, but, sure. but And people are like, oh, you just watch Fox News. Fuck Fox News, man. <laughs> they fucking are just as corrupt, too. Not yeah. as corrupt, but they're corrupt, too. But if he pulls no. out Arizona, Fox News is done. I mean, they're done. I would love that. I would love that. <laughs> Me, too. I don't even care if Trump wins. I would, people think, I, would, I, I just want to see Fox News get destroyed for calling that Arizona. And I'm going to tell you, it's going to come down to like three, 4,000 votes. You watch. See, if Why Trump... Why they call North Carolina? He got 70,000 Because they, votes, they got 14 days to get more votes in. In case all this shit gets overturned, they got somebody, another place they could try and steal. Give me a break. You know, Biden looks so frail. It's sad. You know, it's sad that the American people voted for him. I, I don't know. I feel bad for the guy. The I, guy's I, brain dead. The guy can't put two. He, he can only read off. He can barely read off a teleprompter. Even tonight, yeah, addressing the nation. He addressed the nation and said. Yeah. Yeah. He literally said it. He's reading off a prompter that says 200,000 dead. And he and he said 200 million. Think about yeah, that. You, th- you think that wasn't intentional? The fear mongering is is sometimes subtle, but like, come on, like, didn't he say that before too? Hundreds of millions dead. Yes, 150 like, million dead from fucking you know. gun violence. Okay, this, this is done on purpose. People are so dumb, man. Hey, great. Mike, I got a question for you. Uh, from living in Sacramento and being in the, around the Stone card room, you know, yeah, the Mike Postel Postel scandal or whatever. Yep. What's your take on that still now? I mean, that's been over uh, a year now. What I you- talked to Mike Postel. Um, he's coming on the. He's he's sending a video, coming up very shortly, where he's gonna, he's uh, wants to prove his innocence. Uh, so uh, I say I'm the type of person is innocent. I'm an American. You're you're innocent yeah, before yeah. proven yeah. guilty. Yeah. Not guilty before proven innocence in social media mm-hmm. and everybody's minds. If he has evidence, let me see it. You know what I'm saying? And so that's why yeah. I was one of the people that didn't condemn him when everybody else did. Listen, I play a lot of one, two and one, three poker. And let me tell you something. You can make the easiest folds against people. It's not like, oh, how can he fold that? Well, you, you play with the same people for years. When the guy bets, you know, he has it. You can make you can fold top set sometimes, you know, so we'll see what happens with that. All right. We got to go. Thanks for the call. Appreciate All right, it. Guys. Take care. Love you guys. See you. OK, thanks, bud. Mayor man. Thanks, dude. Yeah, so like I said, yeah. uh, you know, uh, Jeff, uh, I, I, I know you're. Well, I don't care what happens in the election. Like, like even like, like well, I just want them to be exposed for the frauds they are. That's all. Yeah, it's just kind of embarrassing. <laughs> what up, man? Welcome to the mouthpiece. Is Mike and Jeff? Turn oh, your hi, Mike. How's it going? Good. Turn your volume down. Volume down, buddy. Oh, sorry. Is that good enough for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going yeah. on, man? Yeah. I just want I just wanted to under ask you, like, is there any like legal implications if he gets caught cheating? Or if he gets caught huh. with the votes? If if they're able to prove if they're able to literally prove it, okay, the the, the implications the Democrat Party's done. 
<laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? There's your implication. I mean, yeah, well, they're, they're like, done. they won't necessarily all get go to jail. Like these guys are above the law. So I don't okay. see Biden in prison. No, no, no. Even no. if Trump wins and like they're too powerful. But yeah, but lower level people will. There's going to be some. Yeah. The people you know, that are counting we'll votes happens. and all that. Yeah. Well, those like, Kamal, people you know, will. These yeah. people you see on TV, Kamal, Biden, they're not like no matter how much corruption is right in front of our faces, they're not going to jail. Like, no. it's just they're above the law. Just like I get it. I laugh at people who are like, oh, Trump's out of office. He's going to prison. I go, he's nobody's going to prison. No, just like I bet Richie Scalar 5000. He's like, Hillary's going to prison in a year. I go, Hillary's never going to prison. Okay. No. Hey, Bill you, Clinton's ever going to prison? You think? Come on now. Yeah. I mean, what do you think they killed Jeffrey Epstein? You think that was done on purpose? He had all the dirt on everybody. They fucking literally protected Gotti. They protected the Mexican cartel leader. They protected the most dangerous people in the world. Everybody's like the guy Jeffrey Epstein. They're like, he's like, I didn't try and kill myself. They tried to kill me. They tried to kill me. Right. And then, then oh, two weeks later, they, they, they he. All the cameras just magically yeah. happen to oh, be off. The footage is just gone. Yeah. Yeah. All the footage yeah, is gone. Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, I mean, come on, There's a lot man. of strange stuff. Please, man. What they're well, doing. I just think there should be prison time. Yeah, if he gets caught cheating, there should be prison time. Well, that, yeah, let me yeah, tell that's, you something. that's the utopian world. That, yeah, that, yeah, that's the utopian world. But let me tell you something. The thing, I reason why I want Trump to win so bad is not because I like Trump as a person, because I don't. It's because I wanted this media to be held. They would have been held accountable. And now... They're, they got let off. You are fake news. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, they're going to be held accountable in, in some sense by the 70 million people that are, yeah. you know. Well, that's what Tucker said. Right, you know? you know, Tucker, so. Tucker said straight out, he goes, he goes, the, the biggest losers in this fucking election is the fucking putrid media that that tried to tell you how racist Trump was for four years and how awful he was. And he's the worst person in the world. And 71 million people turned out for him. Right. While, while their own candidate has known KKK ties, which isn't a conspiracy theory at all. And it's yeah. not difficult to find at all. No. So, and dude, the guy, is. the guy, is, the guy said more, the guy said about 20 different racist things. Trump's never said one racist thing, but they just call him a racist. It's the most incredible yeah. thing. Trump, call him out of touch, call him, he's a rich guy, but he's only been a politician three and a half years and he's been rubbing shoulders with celebrities and stuff. Look at my African-American just white people. over here. He's Look not at racist. Him. I mean, Are you the greatest? <laughs> you're funny but anyway, I'm like, that's all i got <laughs> all right my man but uh yeah right. it's like uh listen trump got the mo the most african-american votes the most latino votes the uh in the look at in my african-american in the mo in the republican <laughs> party like they pander they all since pander, 1960 like so but like Biden line, literally wrote the 94 crime bill and like what did that what happened what yeah. would that like and they all voted about, for him. what about you know, Kamala calling him out during the primary. She called him a racist. On the same team. Are you and kidding me? That's such hypocrisy. This is the most She'd incredible. Like whole... Say what you want about Trump when he says yeah. something. Like there's nothing in any campaign in 2016 or 2020 that, or, that he's ever said that he didn't try. The only thing he didn't get done was McCain with his thumb down, half brain dead at two in the morning on Obamacare that he campaigned on for 12 years, 10 years to get rid of. Think about that. Think yeah. about that. That's how corrupt these yeah. fucking people are. They're so I think corrupt. they altered it a little bit, but it's still, they're still, yeah. But yeah, you know, we, we just want, we don't want to just fall for the snake oil salesman. So you got to look at all the information. Yeah. Sometimes one guy's really corrupt and one guy's just kind of corrupt. Yeah. So what is better for the nation? And exactly. uh, the media, I think, is the deciding factor here. It's yeah. just a joke. Listen, I, I, I've said it. I've lost a lot of support for Trump because a lot of things he's done over the last couple of years. I mean, I was such a diehard. I was a MAGA guy. And I realized, man, this guy just, I know he, he means well, but the things that he says are just, just appalling to me. So, but yeah. it's not about Trump. It's about what they're, what the, it's about accountability. The media and now social media is now an arm of the media. I don't think a Republican will ever win another unless, unless there's civil war to take out the media. I hate to say it, yeah. but I mean, I mean, if I, Trump I, wins, there's kind of a civil war and then, over the next four years, I don't know what happens with these media companies, but they're definitely not going to stay that biased. Well, here's the thing. They're, is if Trump I mean, loses... They're not going to stay that biased left. Obviously, yeah. things will shift. We'll see what happens. Yeah, well, they realized the middle of the country all voted for Trump. They, they, repudi they repudiated the far-left policies is what they did. Win or lose, you could say that Trump lost. They repudiated far-left policies. They flipped 
four, with Trump on the ballot, they flipped 10 seats when they said the GOP or the Dems were going to flip 15 seats. And they held the Senate when they had the fake poll. Susan Collins down eight points. Fucking Lindsey Graham down four points. They won by a total of 18 between them. They're all lies. Everything the media says is a lie. Yeah. So Yeah, it's just like they, they don't want to admit that Trump has real support. So it's just the divisiveness and... You know, his rallies have been in, insane and like he's actually getting support and the media really just doesn't want to like kind of admit that they the left has been losing the whole year and they looks like they legitimately lost the election and the media is never going to admit that. Right. Exactly. Now. It's, it's, you know, and, so. uh, what, but the thing is, if Trump do, uh, ends up being declared the loser, he's one million trillion. And anybody wants to bet me Trump's opening his own media company. Sean Hannity's coming over to. To, to to his own meet to his own news network he's opened his own new twitter kind of like you know they have parlor they have a couple other places like twitter but wherever trump goes everyone's going and that's going to be the end of twitter and the end of censorship and jack dorsey's going to get what he deserves i mean it i, yeah. I know it these yeah. guys have too much power the tech giants when Wait, they create they, these sort of platforms not, yeah, they, become they, can, so, they become a god you know um, they're the most powerful so whoever, people in the world Facebook and yeah. Twitter and Google are the most powerful organizations in the world. And Absolutely. if they're if they're held unchecked and allowed to censor speech that that is against their political beliefs, we're in trouble. That's it. I got to I'll be back. Yeah. He's on. What's up? Welcome to the mouthpiece is Mike. Hey guys, how you doing? Good, my man. How are you? You know, I just I'm calling from Connecticut, so uh, watching the game, kind of dozing off a little. What's here. going on in the Clemson? But, uh, is the Clemson game still 26 apiece? No, they just went up a uh, touchdown. Wow, they're, they've they're given up no touchdown. points in the second half. Only given up three, huh? Yeah, wow. yeah they they dominated pretty much. Notre yeah. Dame was lucky to be in it. Really? Because I saw 23 to 10 at halftime, and the guy almost ran that that uh, uh, 23-13. I got, I saw him almost run that that uh, field goal back. God, the, the 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 kicker tackled them, and then I've been doing the podcast. And I, I walked in my room, I saw twenty six apiece. So it's what thirty three twenty six now. Yep. Yeah, cool. and, and uh, you know Clemson is uh, they're they're a much better team. I mean, Dude, they're, they're doing they, it without the best they, fucking quarterback in the nation. <laughs> they don't even have their starting. Got a, plus, they've got like three other defensive guys, their best guys that are out. They're they're injured, so yeah, you know they're they're they're, they're playing with one leg. And no, but, they were uh, still they were six and a half point favorites. That goes to show you what they think of Notre yeah. Dame and their undefeated record. So, yeah, yeah, so, uh, absolutely. What's going on, but, man? Hey, listen, I wanted to uh, you know I've watched your show a couple times here. It's pretty good, hmm? and I just want to tell you, uh, as, uh, you know, you and uh, you know you guys both really have uh, really have your head on pretty pretty straight. Of course the we guest do. Uh, Jeff, I'm really impressed by him. Uh, yeah, me you know, too. I, I think he's really. He's really, really on it. Uh, you know, when he was talking about Operation Mockingbird, mm -hmm. uh, that was the uh, that was the operation that was undercover in the church hearings of the '70s. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, just the fact that he knows that—I mean, that that basically was the CIA's infiltration of the media. So this isn't just a, a left-wing media. This isn't just like a bunch of lefties. This is a media that is actually being run by our government. Absolutely. And I think Jeff was. Yeah, and I think Jeff was really on that. And I think you guys both are really on the right track. You know, I think I think maybe you got a little ways to go on things. Yeah. But I think you're really But I, really I spent on a lot right of time track. working on it. Yeah. Cuz cuz you know, I had my injury and when I was like forced to stay home for months, all I did is like read and search and understand what's going on with the government and 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 this is something I never even had an interest in. I never, you know, and somehow I ended up getting political and then I got you know, it all it all really started when I I took a survey in 2016 because my girlfriend said I had to pick a political candidate running for president, and I put my I I had, I had not watched TV in 24 years. I all I ever watched was HBO or sports, and um, I put in. She asked me what I, I I took this questionnaire and Trump came out as my candidate, and I used to hate Trump. I used to say, oh. Oh, this guy's so disgusting. He's such a fucking egomaniac. I mean, one time I even stayed in his hotel in Hawaii. I hated. It. I didn't want to stay there. 
And I actually moved out of the hotel because I just, I didn't like the, it wasn't what I wanted. And I, and then I'm like, fuck, I didn't, I hate, I didn't want to give this guy any money anyway. So I was never a Trump fan, but all of his policies lined up with me. So then I had to start watching the debates, watching everything. And, and then they start, I started realizing how funny he was and, and everything he said was, you know, he's talked like all of us, you know, he wasn't afraid to be a filter. And I think that was the appeal to them when everybody else is just a, a see all these politicians are just glorified lawyers. They they're going to always sound perfect because they're lawyers, okay? And that's that's the difference, you know. And um, well, you know, it, I his person his personality, uh, you know, is one of the things that you know just the fact that he's opposing the media sometimes mm -hmm. you know gets people excited about it. And but I wanted to mention one other thing to you guys. You know, I I, I listened to your show with. Daniel Magrano the other day. Uh -huh. uh, I think it was maybe the last podcast. Yeah, last one. Yeah, and uh, and and I'm and I'm like you know it was really annoying to me. He he's he is. I, I know he's a friend of your guys, and I don't want. Well, want to I mean, the, the thing on, is, is me and him have had political battles, and I, I wanted him. To, I I wanted him to let him spew his 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 nonsense because I wanted you know to have a week like this week. To kind of rebut it, I didn't want to rebut it against him because me, him, he, me, and him are both passionate about politics, and he truly uh, is a well, great, a great guy, but he's completely uninformed and has no idea what's going on in the well, world. Well, well I believe of, in capitalism. I want to, I want to, I, <laughs> I want to impress on both of you guys is that you know he's a uh, when you get into these political arguments, he's a guy that is not going to listen. I mean, he 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 sort of has this pompous attitude. That he's that he's much smarter than everybody, and he's listening to everyone. He's already out thought you like on the poker table, okay. but he really doesn't, and he and he really hasn't looked at anything. And he and he's a, and he's a guy that wants to be politically correct and wants to follow what the uh, the she she opinions of the day are, as opposed to really looking at the facts of some of these things. So it was kind of it was very frustrating. Okay. I, I mean, I, I I was trying to listen to it, and I just I, I can't listen to people like that anymore because they bother me. What I was going to say is that. You guys in the poker community, I know it's hard sometimes trying to convince people of what you're talking about because you're right, but you, you don't want to waste your time with guys like Daniel. I mean, personally, you can waste your time, but don't try to even convince them because a guy like that is never going to be convinced of anything. You just kind of let it go and move, move to the people that are on the side or, or on the margins that you can actually convince of things. Because I found over, over the years, I mean, I run into the same thing that you guys have. I'm a little, little bit older than you two, but, you know, I've run into things where you, you, you can't convince people of stuff. You just let it go. Go to the next person. Yeah. And, and it's, but, but it's important to be in that, in that community. You know, like th there's all kinds of communities. You, you guys are in the poker community. There's people that are in banking. There's people that are in legal. The people that are in, you know, whatever they're in. You know, you have to work to try to get people to understand what's going on. It's really difficult. And I, I just want to say that I was really impressed by Jeff. Uh, I, you know, really open-minded guy looking for the answers, not looking right, left. Sometimes we get caught up in this Republican Democrat thing yeah. and we, and you lose sight of what's really going on. And I uh, just wanted to mention that to you guys. I really appreciate the show and, uh, you know, I appreciate uh, your opinions. I appreciate it, man. man. I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, you know, the truth is what unites people. It's just sometimes the truth is sort of difficult or uncomfortable or complex, um, so yeah, that's all we're trying to do. You know, we're, it's hard to talk to people who are kind of very hard headed, but from their point of view, we probably look hard headed. So yeah. I get that. Um, the well, issue is just, well, yeah, the media, people just taking that immediate reaction and, and before the research and it should just be looking at all the information before like, oh, the media said it. So I think it, and people don't realize how much it's affecting them um, and their thoughts. Well, we, well, you know, something too, Jeff, you, you mentioned that we're all susceptible to being really closed minded, you know, so mm -hmm. as passionate as we are on our opinions and how strong we feel, we always have to remember that, you know, we could be wrong on things too and be open to change what our opinions are. Because I'll tell you over the years, I've had some, you know, opinions that have been dead wrong. I felt very strongly about them. And, you know, when I look back, I said, geez, why did I hang on to those opinions? It was kind of your ego. We've all, we've all been there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have. You got to just learn as you go sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and also you understand that where people are coming from when you're trying to convince somebody of something, you know, they're just blocked. Some people are just totally blocked. They, they, they you know, until you unblock them, they'll never, ever listen. You could you could show them exactly what you're talking about and they'll they'll just ignore it. 
uh, until they're able yeah. to really open their mind. So that's really the battle to get to vote. Well, that's mind. what's going to be good. With like Daniel says, we're going to have a bet that we're each going to watch two hours. I have uh, we're, we're, together. We're going to watch two hours of of right of Fox and two hours of CNN for seven days. And he says, I'm going to show you 90% of the things that they say is a lie. And when he said that to me, now he's going to get red pilled because once he's able to open his mind and he's going to be able to see, and I'm going to be able to literally dissect and show him that everything that comes out of CNN's mouth is a lie. He'll be able to see it. Mike's so, too dumb to be gonna, a You're going to bet on that? Yeah, we, he said he wanted to bet me. We, we don't have the. He's going. Yeah. He wants to do his. Uh, he's going to do his. Uh, After his that, challenge first. Your, your heads up. You him versus you will be a bigger well, heads up. Just a I, political I, challenge. I, I, yeah. I can tell you guys. Well, you guys are big betters. You guys yeah. are big gamblers. But I got a bet for you. That thing will be a stalemate. No, I think I think you know what I tell people all the time. Okay, because like I had never smoked pot in my life until a couple of years ago, and this girl told me to smoke some. I mean, I used to do all the all kinds of drugs in O2, but I never did any pot. And um, so she told me to do it to help me sleep, and it did. But all of a sudden, when I started smoking a little pot, it opened my mind up like big time. And when you when you literally when you smoke pot and you watch something and you look for information, you see it much more clearly. That's why I was telling everybody for months, Trump's going to lose, Trump's going to lose, Trump's going to lose. And they're like, no, Mike, you're so stupid. He's not going to lose. He's going to win. I go, he's going to lose because I said the mail in ba- the mail in ballots and the media. I'm like, they had the media in 2016. They didn't have social media. Now they had the media. They had social media. And they had the fucking mail-in ballots. I said he's never going to overcome that. And uh, as of right now, it's looking like I'm right. And uh, you know, yeah, it's kind of like people telling Hillary supporters four years ago she was going to lose. I knew it. You know, I, I um, bet it. Some yeah. of them, you know, he, sometimes you just don't have the information that where that would make sense. You know, it doesn't make sense until you see all the the things play out. And I re- and I remember in 2016 when we were walking around the poker room, you came up to me and you go, "You're you're supporting Trump? Are you crazy?" I'm like, "You don't <laughs> understand what I know that you don't know." And you were like, "Okay." I remember that. I remember that conversation so vividly. You know, when I found out, I didn't even know you were, you were like, you know, I'm not really a Trump supporter, but you know, you got you know, you see what's going on in the world now. I had no idea until recent, until like three days ago. And I'm thinking, man, that's the same Jeff Matson that told me I was crazy in 2016. <laughs> I mean, the thing was then was I knew that the Clintons were corrupt still. And right. but like this is kind of before seeing some of it. Mm-hmm. But you still just see, see Trump and this anti-Trump sentiment. It's like you didn't even believe he would win the you know nomination. And it's like this guy has no chance. And like the media was so against him that. It was just like it made sense to kind of like, who is this Trump guy? And I just assumed Hillary would win, you know, right. because first female president, people don't see the corruption. And then once he won, I was like, something was fishy here. But you start to see all the information. You're like, oh, wait, maybe Trump winning was actually better for the nation, despite all the divisive talk about how he is. And right. I, you just start seeing that. And the media, again, is the where it goes back to. It's just so obvious that they're corrupt. And yeah. they spent four years delegitimizing his presidency. They went Russia, Russia, Russia for the first two and a half years. Then they went with impeachment, impeachment, impeachment on a bunch of bullshit. You notice how 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 they never brought up impeachment once during the in the last six months. Yeah, it's just one thing after the other. Now they have COVID this year. I mean, they but yeah. like COVID this year. That's what they ran on was COVID. They and ran on COVID. Trump. Basically. They ran on COVID and yep. as good a job as listen, Trump made a lot of mistakes, but Operation Warp Speed, the fucking the the, the vaccine is going to be out like in a month instead of a year. Um, he's 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 fact he's he's done uh, right to try. He's done so many things like he people that, that, that are anti Trump. They don't even know what this guy's done because the media is 92 percent negative coverage. They, the only thing they give him a little credit for is the. Uh, the uh the crime bill uh not the crime bill but the uh uh, uh the first step act right but even yeah. then they don't talk about it much because they know they'll get too they'll get too many black voters so um I mean the suppression yeah. of information is the end of this country if if the media or social media is able to censor we will be in civil war there is no way well, around it there is no way around well, let me- it. Let me turn this uh, a left wing, uh, you know, around a little bit again on the COVID thing. It just shows how powerful this media is. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, we've taken what's essentially a cold virus and we've turned it into a completely worldwide crisis based on nothing more than that. I mean, it's 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 a little bit worse than the flu. It's probably for I mean, if you're under 60 with no underlying condition, it's probably the flu. Okay, but if you're over 60 or you have underlying conditions, it's probably about five times worse than the flu. I'm not lying. When I say COVID's a hoax, people attack me. COVID's not a hoax. COVID's real, but it's just not real deadly. Okay, it's been just that the numbers have been fudged similar to this voter fraud. It doesn't mean that COVID doesn't exist. It just means you can find widespread corruption there, too, of hospitals getting paid off for doing, you know, for for claiming COVID. You have all these comorbidities of these deaths where the person clearly didn't die of COVID. So it's a lot of similar stuff where you just have to look into it and see that there's widespread fraud when it comes to the COVID numbers. Not that. Yeah. And here's here's another thing. Um, This was like I'll just go back to. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't mean to cut you off, Jeff. I'll go Very back good. two weeks ago when Trump came out and said they're inflating the COVID numbers because they get paid more. On CNN, they ran with Trump's accusing all these thousands of people and the doctors don't care and they only care about money. Well, go look it up yourself. If it's if you get hospitalized, OK, and you're under government health, the government has to give you 13,000. If they give you that you died from COVID. If you, you know, you could have been fucking like going to die any day anyway, but you got COVID. They put it as a COVID death. They get 39,000. That's what they hate Trump for. He was telling the truth. And anybody listen to me right now, go look it up if they don't believe me. Yeah. People just claiming like it's anti-science, like every doctor is on the side of this bullshit. And they aren't. There's plenty of non, you know, mainstream media doctors and, you know, epidemiologists and stuff. So... Yeah, uh, it's just, uh, you know, of course, people with illnesses, comorbidities, like less healthy people are getting sick and the masks and lockdowns are not helping causing more illness. It's like a self perpetuating sort of thing. Um, And then just the fear, just echo chambering, you know, on Twitter and stuff. It's just never ending. It's kind of like the war on terror. It's like this invisible fear mongering thing that it's not like it doesn't exist even at all, but it's not this huge you know, this, the war on terror, remember that? Didn't we go into this, like some bullshit wars for that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many, you know, terrorist attack did you see Americans actually legitimately dying by in America? Like, And that's what Trump, that's another thing Trump's been, the, Trump's the first president in 39 years, didn't start another war, you know? Yeah, we want to get out of the endless wars and the bullshit. Oh, don't worry, with, with Biden in there, okay. there'll be more wars. Don't think there won't. Hey, let me give you guys a, a quick one here. GaryBarnett.com. Uh, he's a guy that's out of, I think he's out of Montana or something. Really bright guy. He's looked into the COVID thing extensively. Pretty consistent with what you guys are saying, but I think he has a little more depth on some of it. Yeah. Um, if you want to take a look at that, it's a really informative. Uh, GaryBarnett.com. You know, really, I just picked up on him maybe two or three months ago. Very bright guy. Something that, you know, really challenges. I think I'm in agreement with, you know, 80% of what you guys are saying, except I think it's a little less serious than the flu, but uh, but he, he really lays it out pretty yeah. good if you want to take a look at it. Yeah, well, it's like, where did why did flu numbers go down 98%? Where are those going? Yeah. We cured flu, and yet COVID numbers are going up. There's something, yeah. again, that yeah. doesn't add up. Yeah, and, and evidence, this is not a lie. Go. I ask all the people who think me and Jeff are crazy to fucking go look. <laughs> flu, flu numbers are down 98%. Did, did the flu yeah. just disappear? The issue is you tell people to research and then they think that word means like, oh, you're queuing on and stuff. It's like they don't even do the five minutes of work because they just don't want to. It's really it's really puzzling because I'll give you an example. We had uh, recently I had I spoke to two doctors. Uh, One of them was when I challenged her on any of this stuff, she got offended. And it was like I was, uh, you know, going to, you know, beat up her kids or something and and then i spoke with another doc and this, these are both primary care physicians i spoke with another doctor you know maybe a week later and this doctor was like yeah you're totally right this is this is total bs well we're, we're these are symptoms that are just innocuous and we get them all the time oh, yeah. and we're categorizing categorizing them as COVID. so it's really hard for people to get their head around it because if you talk to one person They'll say, and, and the people in the know, doctors that are treating yeah. people, one, one doctor will say it's a real thing. 
But oh, it's I, I, real. I it's just it's that. just not real deadly. I mean, if you're over 65 with underlying conditions, you need to stay home. You know, I'm not. Yeah. That's not that's not what I'm saying. OK, but to close the whole world down, this is all about control. OK, if they put the entire world into poverty, who can the government controls the people? I mean, it's just, yeah, I mean, the lockdowns have destroyed small businesses, like destroyed people's lives, literally, for something that 99.8% you know, survive like, from. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just like yeah. this this media thing that is going to be dying down. But honestly, it's it's if, if Biden continues to be the winner, we're going to see more masks and lockdowns. And it's just more. Of oh, that we're going to be locked down. If anybody wants to bet me. And if that if, unless the I mean, uh, I mean, Trump says that for everything I say, the vaccines are going to start in December, but they won't be able to get a, they say 100 million will get vaccinated by April. First of all, they're never giving me a vaccine. I don't know about you. But they ain't giving <laughs> Fuck me. That. Let me, let me t- How about let you, me Jeff? You gonna, Jeff, are you going to take a vaccine? <laughs> never, 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 never. Me neither. So uh, but they're then all, all the crybaby, they, they, they can they can all vaccine. worry about it, you know. So anyway, we got to go, man. Talk to you later. Thanks yeah, for the call. Take care. Uh, All right, man, later. Yeah, I got to let's, uh, maybe wrap yeah, it let's wrap this soon. up. Hey, I appreciate it, Jeff. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. And yeah, uh, this was a fun call. It's good to see a poker player with uh, a brain. And I'm going to touch on one other poker player with a brain. Um, I became a uh, pretty good friend. Well, I was always good friends, but we I had no idea. It's Eugene Kachaloff, right? We went to dinner in December. And all of a sudden, he started telling me about how great Trump was. And I'm like, wait a minute. Weren't you like... Like like Daniel, the anti-Trump in December of in 2016, and he said to me, he goes, "Yeah." He goes, "But I woke up the next day, and I said something's not right here. How could 63 million people vote for this clown, right?" <laughs> and he something's goes, right. "He said I'm a smart guy." He goes, "63 million people can't be racist. I'm something's not right here." Then he told me he started following Scott Adams, which Scott Adams is one of the best followers you could ever follow. Um, on Twitter. So uh, shout out to Scott Adams. And he said, and then I realized that everything I've been told is a lie. And I'm like, exactly. And so here's yeah. a guy, you know, we like, I don't want to, you know, uh, Daniel's probably not listening to this, but like, like when yeah. I, I was like the only poker player not invited to Daniel's wedding because I was like, because of how much I supported Trump and I, I over got politics, TV. you know, yeah. and now that we've, you know, <laughs> we're friends, we're friends now we're good. But, but like, like Eugene was at his wedding and Eugene told me, he goes, I was there. I'm like a bigger Trump supporter than you are now. So it's like he kind of woke up and this is why I tell people, I I put on Twitter, 71 million people. They've been telling you for four years, the guy's a racist. He's a criminal. He's this, he's that, he's this, is that. Every time you turned on the media, the media told you this. And 71 right. million, more people voted for Trump than anybody in the history of our country. Think about yeah. that. Think about <laughs> that, people. There's only like 10 million that watch Fox News, if that. Give yeah. me a break, people. Wake up. That's all I ask. Wake yeah. up. You're I don't care. Over. I don't care if you hate yeah. Trump. Okay, fine. Wake up. And in 2024, I want people who are fucking pro Biden that are listening to this show right now to call me in about two years and say, Mike, I can't believe you were right. Because I know there's going to be a ton of them that are going to tell me. Just wake up, look for the information, and you're going to see where the corruption lies. That's all. Yeah, let's do the work. All That's right, it. Jeff. I appreciate you all coming right, on. Thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, I got to do my uh, pick of the week, and uh, we're out of here. All right, Jeff. Take care, man. Thanks a lot. Later, dude. Peace Peace out. Thank you. Okay. So take care, Jeff. Thanks so much. Later. Um, So what we got going now is uh, it's time for my pick of the week. I lost last week at San Francisco. They really shit the bed. They they did lose their quarterback and their tight end, and now they're like the worst team in football and never had a chance. So we are three and five. Started out two and zero. Oh, that means we are. That means we're one and five in the last six weeks on our pick of the week. So if you're a better, you just check her me, and you win all the cheese. So I have literally lowered. I, I've literally knocked my pick of the week down to three: Buffalo, Atlanta, or Arizona. Um, it's an early game going into the cold. I think Seattle's defense stinks. I I know Buffalo has a few injuries. And uh, Atlanta, 
who's two and six and has literally, literally given away four, three games. Okay. They should be five and three. They were 99.9, 99.8, and 98.7% to win the game. Okay. And they lost three of these games. This team should be five and three, a half a game behind Tampa and New Orleans in that division. I think they're really good. Denver stinks. They got some miracle last week against San Diego or the Chargers because the Chargers have now blown four, four games where they led by 16 in the fourth quarter. So, no team had ever done three. They've now done four. So um, this is a toss-up between Atlanta and Seattle. I'm, I mean, Buffalo and Atlanta. I'm going to go with Buffalo plus two and a half is my pick of the week. Uh, you hear it here in the mouthpiece. I just think Seattle coming off the big division win last week. They're now up by uh, two games plus a tiebreaker, uh, two and a half games in the division. They're going in the early game in Buffalo. I'm going with the Buffalo Bills plus two and a half. It's close, though. I really like Atlanta against Denver, but, you know, they, they've given so many games away. It's tough to lay points with them. Buffalo plus two and a half. My pick of the week are on the mouthpiece. All right, everybody. That was a fun show. Thanks for listening. Uh, we'll be back next week, episode 57. And we'll talk about what's going on in the world some more. The election's over. Sports are over. We only got football going. Not much poker. We'll find something to talk about. We'll see you all next week here on The Mouthpiece.